y'all, you know what it is. It's them kids and wives and 925s, but we are still married to the games. Episode 374. Yes, sir. It's your boy Gabe Patillo with Tim Router, Ed Placencia, and Chris McCracken, of course. And as always, we are talking games and life, life and games. Thank you guys so much for being here this week. Oh, man. I got to start off with my boy, Ed, because for two reasons. Number one, he on vacation. And number two, he killed it for stack up this last weekend. Oh, yeah, man, that was so much fun. Yeah. Eduardo, man. how are you, buddy? I'm doing well, man. I'm doing well. I am rested. And um, uh, yeah, it was nice. I had a great time. And you know what? The community killed it at stack up this weekend. You know, I yeah. we went in with a. I had a personal goal of a thousand dollars, and we uh, at two eighteen uh, early Saturday morning we hit a thousand dollars and ended up uh, stopping it. Uh, ended up with two uh, twelve oh five. Nice, the total oh, that's number. Awesome. So Good yeah, deal. I was really excited, really happy, really stoked. It went really well. Um, it was just really nice, just because we have people who listen from all time zones. So I was yep. never alone, which was nice. So it was uh, um, yeah. Had people with me the entire time. Had a great time. We had a blast playing Jackbox and just every game that uh, that was that, that we could dive into. And we had a lot of fun. Dad was in, and Dad shared his story, and it was uh, for a lot of people the, their first time hearing his story. And yeah, and so that was that was a great time. And yeah, we had a lot of fun. Um, I, I felt like compared to last year when I did twenty four hours, I felt. I felt like I felt better. Um, Did you? Yeah, I didn't. Uh, uh, I, I don't think it, the the wall started to hit me until much later this year, which was well, nice. That's good. That is good. What time did it hit you? You think? Probably at the twenty. The last three hours were really rough. I think last year the last four hours were rough on me. Interesting. Mm. Even though the sun's up, huh? Exactly. Exactly. And. Uh, Someone took a clip of, I think it was during the last hour. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. And when I finished, I was like, okay, I'm tired. I know I'm tired. But I didn't, when I watched the clip, I didn't realize how tired I sounded. <laughs> yeah. Oh, really? I want to see it. It's so it was, funny. It was just me. Uh, I don't know what I'm supposed yeah, to like, do here. Uh, 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 <laughs> <laughs> wow. It's awesome. But it was a lot of fun. I had a good time. And, um, yeah, we are on vacation now. We left on, um, I left Sunday to fly down to Hilton Head, South Carolina. And um, Sarah's dad got a, a nice beachside uh, house for us and rented it out for us for the week. And Sarah and I are here and her brothers and, and uh, their wives are here and um, just having a really nice time. It's kind of the same thing that we did last year just a different location. Nice. And uh, it's been a good time to just chill and relax. Gaming-wise, I haven't played anything really since I've been here. But yeah, of course, did you take anything with you even? Um, I took like a couple decks of cards and stuff just because mm -hmm. we were flying. No, I mean, you didn't take a console, though, is what I'm saying. No, no, no. Yeah, someone asked if I was going to bring the VR, and I was like, not if the baggage handlers are in charge of my I luggage. Know no, that's I'm not. right, yeah, number seriously. one. Yeah, so... Um, but if you had the uh, quest, you could just put it in a backpack and you're good. Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. Lem, fork it over, buddy. That's right. Um, exactly. <laughs> Gametographer for this. <laughs> exactly, right. So I spent uh, this afternoon, I pre-ordered Star Wars, and it should be downloading for me. By the time I get home, it'll be there yes. in a couple days old. So yeah. 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 that'll yeah. be nice. Um, Game-wise, of course, uh, got to play some Overwatch, got to play some Jackbox, uh, got to play some legos and got to jump into death stranding and um that's right i uh i i liked i liked metal gear solid mm -hmm. five is that what it was chris yeah. yes um and, and uh so kind of went into this and i am um uh, i'm liking it i'm very very early into it still i played about four hours on the stream and i got to the point where i was playing late and i was like you know what i want to make sure i'm paying attention to the story um, I don't want to miss anything. I feel like this is a game where I really need to pay attention. I may not even stream it, uh, mm -hmm. the rest of it, just because I really want to focus on the story. Um, but so far, I, I'm really enjoying it. You know, I, I kind of went in knowing that people were saying that it was a slow moving game, 
There are a lot of cut scenes, but that's not a complaint to me. Okay. Um, yeah, right. it, it looks incredible. It just yeah, it really does looks amazing. Um, I kind of like the um, the gameplay so far. Again, I'm not very far into it. It's pretty simple right now. Uh, I like the fact that um, without giving you know, if you don't want to know anything about the game without giving too any too many spoilers, I like the way that you can interact with other players, even though you're not directly interacting with them. I think that's a really cool little, little feature they've added in there. And uh, I'm curious to get more into it. You know, it's funny, Ed, you know how we always talk about with PlayStation four, like we've gotten so far that usually the cutscenes don't look too much different than the actual game. Yes. I feel like what's weird about these cutscenes though, are they look really, really good. <laughs> and mm-hmm. so you can still kind of tell the jump between when you're controlling it and the cutscenes because the cutscenes look amazing. Right, right. And and it's it's funny too because um you know again this is my I guess second Kojima game mm-hmm. and so I don't know what's common to him and what isn't and how much he plays around but it's funny to see Norman Reedus break the fourth wall from yeah, time to time. That yeah. That is weird, right? Uh that's very so Kojima to break the fourth wall by the way. Is it really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Very, and uh, very. I, <laughs> it's just it's just really uh it's it's really cool. I like that they are um, again, I'm pretty early in, but I like that they're unfolding the plot via breadcrumbs and not just, and here's what's happening. Mm-hmm. You know, I kind of like the whole slow unveil of it all. Um, when you do interact with the, what it is that you're not sure is out there. I like the moments of suspense that come into it. And it really is a, a, a nice shift in gears from just kind of walking around. And then all of a sudden it gets really tense. Yeah. Mm. And, and, and so it's, it's, it's been nice again. I'm very early in, I can't wait to get back and get into more of it. Um, so yeah, I, 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 I walk away now being pleasantly surprised. I didn't know what to expect and very eager to jump into more of it. So it's, uh, I'm, I'm going to have a, a couple good games to get into next week when I get home. There you go. That's yeah. awesome. That's super fun. Yes. I love that. And you guys are enjoying your time and it's relaxing. Yeah, we're having a very nice time. It's very relaxing. I mean, Sarah's um, still working out on the beach, which is... Sarah's ridiculous. still working out on the beach. Mm-hmm. I finally caught up on my sleep after my 24 hours. Oh, yeah. good. Um, <laughs> and so I, I, the, the day, the Saturday during the day, I didn't get any sleep because Sarah was gone. And so, of course, every hour, Batman had to let me know he was still there. Yes. Uh, and so I, I, I rolled into into Hilton Head with, with just a couple hours sleep under my belt. And then that first night I slept 12 hours and it just nice. felt amazing. I love that <laughs> your first crazy. tweet was like, slept 10 hours. I feel amazing. You're like, correction, 12 hours. I'm like, Jeez. <laughs> I'm awesome. like, oh yeah, that's right. 10 to 10 is 12. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> that's but yeah, incredible. it's been nice. Awesome, man. Chris McCracken. Yes. You're under the weather. Yeah, a little bit. Oh, no. Uh, no, no, man. Starting to come down with something, um, it, but I found, like, I could sense that it was coming, so I've been, like, packing up the day quill and taking the night quill and yeah. slamming the emergency and everything, oh, God. which I know is more preventative than anything else, but still is like, hey, a bunch of vitamin C can't hurt. So I'm trying to, right. to like, nip it in the bud before it really grows into something yes. worse, but like, right. as you maybe can tell, I'm not sure, but... My voice is kind of dipping a little bit. I got a lot of coughing going and oh, everything sucks, like that. Man. So, I'm sorry. Yeah, I mean, it it could be a lot worse. So I'm, yep. not, I'm trying That's not to complain sure. or anything. There you but go, man. Trying to just nurse it uh, for the time being. Um, <clears throat> so this past weekend, we it's been like, geez, months since the last time we made a trip to Oklahoma. So we finally had a weekend that was free, and we drove on oh, nice. to Oklahoma and spent some time with Stacy's family. Oh, good. And uh, and some of our friends up there. It was a little bit of a short trip. We did drive up uh, Friday evening, slept there, and then spent most of the day Saturday. And then we woke up on Sunday, just kind of had breakfast and got around. And then we headed out um, because we knew we wanted to get back into town before it got too late in the evening or anything like that. Um, It's always nice to come back and then still have some daylight so you can, like, take the dog around and take her for a nice walk. Mm -hmm. Because the way that it is now with the whole time change... I leave and the sun's just coming up and I come home and the sun's just gone down. So yep. it's Especially like yeah. during the winter, right? Yeah. And it's getting, it's been really cold here the last three or four days. So, it, you know, she doesn't, her, her walks are way shorter and everything like that. So it's <clears> nice <throat> whenever you have like a middle of the day to take her with right. some daylight and everything out there. So we didn't want to stay away for too long, but we definitely wanted to make sure we got up there and, and visit with uh, friends and family. 
And then um, we actually both had Monday off, um, but we used that time to take care of a bunch of other things that we didn't get to do because we were out of town for the weekend. So we did get to chill a little bit in the evening and kind of relax a little. Um, but it, it, during the day, we were kind of doing a couple of errand, different things and stuff. But still, it was nice overall, even though you're doing things and things that need to get done. It's more of like, OK, and I'm going to go do this. And you just kind of lazily go and do it. It's not like a, oh, my gosh, mandatory because I've only got another hour and then I need to go to sleep and then get up and go and work the next day and all that. Mm-hmm. So it was it was nice. And we both had that day off. So that was really nice as well. Nice. Um, <clears throat> on the gaming side, uh, I when we got back on Sunday, so I had picked up um, my copy of Death Stranding on Friday, but I knew it wasn't going to get to play it. So I just put it aside. And then when we got home, I was like, well, before I jump into this, I feel like I'm at the end of Call of Duty, the campaign. So I went ahead and said, you know, I'm just going to jump into that. And oh, if, yeah. If I'm, if I'm where I think I am, I should finish it within, you know, a couple of hours. And I don't mm-hmm. remember exactly how many more I had to play, but it was, a, you know, three, four hours maybe. So I went ahead and finished out the story. A lot of fun. Really enjoyed that campaign. That's yeah. awesome. Um, the first half of it, I was... It, all Call of Duty campaigns kind of have that like, oh my gosh, it's crazy action, and we're swapping you between characters, and I don't remember this dude's name, and it's a yeah. little discombobulating there at the beginning, but then things started getting into place, and because it's 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 kind of like a soft reboot of the Modern Warfare trilogy, mm-hmm. um, there's some things that came in, and then towards, once you get to the end of the story... There are some things that happen that you're just like, if you, so my back history, which I've kind of mentioned a little bit on the show before, but what got me back into gaming was Call of Duty. So right. Modern Warfare, and then I was really into Modern Warfare 2, Modern Warfare 3. Those were always my favorite from a story standpoint of the games. Um, I know a lot of other people really like the Black Ops series and everything, and it never really stuck with me as much. It was the it was the Modern Warfare series. Yeah. So yeah. if you are a person who is a fan of the modern warfare series on the campaign side, there is stuff that happens in this game because it's, I'm assuming that it, it, it that they're going to want to do more of these. I, I don't really know, I guess, but there's things that happen that just are huge callbacks. You're like, Oh, that is so cool that you're going to pick oh, up nice. on and be super happy about. Let me ask you this, um, Chris. And I think what you just said will probably, uh, should, should be the answer to what I'm about to ask you. But I feel like having played almost all the call of duty since, I don't know. I don't know. It's been I've played a bunch of them. Um, mm-hmm. I feel like Modern Warfare had the best story though out of all of them. I agree. I do know there are a lot of people who really like the story in Black Ops One. Well, Black that Ops was, was great too. Black Ops is a very close second for me. Yeah. Mm. Well, I I played Black Ops One was the last campaign that I played until we got to World War Two. Yeah. Like, even though most of those games actually had a campaign, it was only Uh Modern Warfare or Black Ops 4 or whatever that didn't. I just didn't care. And Black Ops 1 story, it just didn't take for me the way that it did everybody else. I mean, it was fine, but I just didn't really, it didn't really grab me. I liked the Modern Warfare series was always the one that I really connected with. Yeah. I liked it better than World War 2. But I think, I feel like I was probably burnt out on the World War 2 thing because I had also played Battlefield 1 that year. Mm hmm. Oh, and so, right. and that was a throwback as well. And so I was like, yeah. okay, I get it. Yeah. We were all thinking the same thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I enjoyed World War II. Um, and I also played Battlefield One, but I didn't play any of the World War II inspired Call of Duty games. So it was kind of, I don't know. I just really, and I really enjoy World War II. I know the mm-hmm. difference between one and two is not really super vast different, but it's different enough that I, I really enjoyed a lot of that stuff. But the Modern Warfare series, was always like that's the one where I actually learned the characters' names. I knew who they were, mm-hmm. and I knew a little bit of their backstory. Like I couldn't really tell you that about almost any of the other Call of Duty campaigns that I yeah, played. The Black right. Ops ones, even World War Two. Like I don't remember the main protagonist name or any of that kind of stuff. Like I know no, who no, Captain no. Price is. Right. I know who these other people yeah. are. So yeah. when they when they come back and when they're, it's just I don't want to give anything away for anybody who hadn't played it yet. But but it's just great to see them, right? There's really cool stuff. Yeah, yeah really cool stuff. That's so awesome. All the way into the end, and it's it's typical Call of Duty. It's not too long. It feels like it's a good amount of action and everything, and it's just the right mm-hmm. amount of pacing, and it's it's the right duration. Like if it was any longer, it'd feel like okay, let's let's move this along. And then, but it's not. It ends right when it feels like it should. And let me ask you this: really good. there was one of them. I can't remember what it was, and maybe it wasn't Call of Duty, mm-hmm. but I felt like one of them was it Battlefield. I don't remember. 
one of those little war games I felt like just had <laughs> language just for language sake. Did this one feel like that or did that stick out to you at all? Maybe I'm sensitive no. to that. But I feel like some of them, they're like, oh, they just, that, that F word doesn't even go like that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, this one, I don't remember. I, I don't feel, I, I never got the sense that it felt that way. Nice. Mm-hmm. Um, I will say that. Even oh, it was Call Quantum Duty, Break. It was Quantum Break that I'm thinking of. My stream last year, oh, I was playing through yeah. Quantum Break and I was like, these guys are just cussing for a cuss sake. Like they, this yeah. doesn't mm. even feel natural in here. Interesting. Hey, can you hand me some effing French fries? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, what, dude? That's just felt. here. You're at Whataburger. Just I take remember, them. Right. I remember last year on my stream, I was apologizing over and over again because I was like, sorry about the language, like, because it just yeah. felt over the top. If it yeah. fits, then it doesn't offend me so much. Right. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? But it's like, if it's just in there just to sound like a, a college kid, and I'm like, college kids don't even talk like that. Come on. I know, right? Yeah. I will say that Call of Duty's always, or maybe not always, but it's had a lot of campaigns where it's, kind of pushed a little bit of boundaries and tiptoed yeah. around some subjects that you're just kind of like, ah, I don't know. This one does the exact same thing. There, there are things that happen and, and things that go on that are not going to make you feel great about it. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, so it's definitely in that sense it does, but I, there's not like, there is foul language, but it's not yeah, of course. like you're rem- remarking with Quantum Break, which yeah. like just to do it. Yeah. It, it, it doesn't feel like that at all. Nice. I'm glad. Um, Jumped into a little bit more season three on Apex. I made it to level, I think, 53, which is the last time, last legendary skin you get. There's still more things to get all the way up to level 100, but I wanted to get to this one because it was a lifeline legendary skin and I don't have a really good skin for her. So I'm good with that. If I'm, I will be paying more in season three, but I don't know how much longer it's going to last. So if I don't make it all the way to 100, I'm, I'm fine. I, I feel like I got to the point where I wanted to get in mm-hmm. that. So. Still will jump in whenever I can occasionally. It's a lot of fun. Still dabbling with Call of Duty multiplayer a little bit. Now that I'm getting higher level because it's skill based and I and I'm my score is getting a little bit up there, starting to put me against a lot harder people. So it's mm-hmm. starting to be a little more struggle bus ish right now. Um, but still really enjoying it and mostly sticking to if I'm not doing the the gunfight, mostly sticking to the modes that are either no respawn or like uh, free for all or whatever like that. The old faithfuls, if you will. I'm not really mm-hmm. dabbling too much with like ground war, the big scale battle stuff. I'm just not really Me concerned about any of that stuff, yeah. at least not right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then jumped into Death Stranding. And before I get into that, I'm just going to say, um, <clears throat> there. May, I guess this is a known issue, or or for some people anyways, but apparently the slim PlayStation and PlayStation 4 Pros, at least some amount of them are kind of having this issue where after a year or so of being around, the disk drive starts having issues. And oh, wow. you guys know I, I buy almost everything digitally and almost mm-hmm. never use my disk drive. The last drive I, or the last game I used it on was Spider-Man because I bought that collector's edition. Um, I just okay. left the disk in, in the PlayStation. Every time I boot it up, you know, it does its whole, you hear making the noises or whatever, like oh, it's yeah. been up. But I just left it in there because like, oh, if I want to jump back in, I'm going to have to have it in there anyways. Um, right. And so I went to go put in Death Stranding and I, it would not recognize the disc. It kept sending damaged disc, no. all this stuff. And I looked at it, I was like, there's nothing wrong with this disc. And then I put, I grabbed, um, I just started grabbing other discs, like Spider Man didn't work, Death Stranding didn't work. I have, no. still have, uh, what is it called? What? Um, Colossus of, or what, Shadow of the Colossus. Shadow. I still have that. Mm-hmm. Put that in, didn't work. Jeez. Did some research. And that's when I started finding out that this was a bit of an issue. What and the oddly heck? enough, I found out one of the fixes that works for most people is you just turn the PlayStation up on its side, like it's standing up, like really? you would with the PlayStation oh, interesting. 2. Interesting. Yeah, all right. And that worked for me the first time. Oh, no. But other times it doesn't. Like tonight, I jumped in. I was like, I, I, I wasn't, I'm not feeling obviously all that great. And so I was like, yeah, I just want to play something a little bit before the show, but I just want to play something that's chill. You know, I don't want to really right. worry about anything and get all tensed up and everything. Um, so I was going to play Death Stranding, and it wouldn't recognize the disc. And so what I'm having to do is I'm having to, uh, start the PlayStation, put the disc in, and then I have to like rock it back and mm. forth until it just what? kind of catches. Serious? And then wow. it works. Yeah. So Ugh. needless to say, because we're at the end of the generation and I don't feel like there's any more collector's editions this gen I'm going to be buying, I will not be buying another physical game. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, you, I think wow. you've checked out. Yeah. <laughs> because it's, it's well past its, well, I think, because I think the, the uh, warranty is only a year. So it, it does mention, it says like, oh, you can send it back to Sony and they'll, they'll fix it. And I'm sure they will. But one, it's probably going to cost me money. And two, who knows how long that's going to take. Yeah, six I'm not going to on that one. I can just yeah. buy a digital game and I'm all good. Mm-hmm. 
So oh, I'm hoping that it, this does. And I thought like once it read the first time and loaded everything on the disc, I was like, okay, I'm probably golden because it's just going to spin up the disc long enough to check the license and be good. But I guess that's not the case. I guess it spins up a little bit longer. Um, and this was the first time tonight where once I got it to actually load the game onto the PlayStation that I've had to do some stuff to try to get it to read it again. I, I just left it in there. I was like, I'm just going to leave it alone. Do no you deal. remember? What the heck? I, I, you know, and I, and I know stuff goes wrong. Now, it feels a little fast for the pro to be acting up. Um, but I don't know if were any of you guys PS1 kids. Were you a PS1 kid? Yes. Chris? No. Mm -hmm. um, so after a while, the PS1 disc wouldn't work either, disc drive. Yeah. And so mm -hmm. what you had to do was put your game in and then power it on and then turn it upside down. Yep. Do you remember really? that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I, had to I used do to that. have to play mine upside down all the time. Wow, what the? Heck? Yeah, man. Disc drive. I mean, you guys you just got to remember too that it's a bunch of super small pieces. Yeah. Oh yeah, working yeah. All the time, so it's like you know, it, it. It's a wonder that mine still works. I was telling Chris because he was telling me about this the other night. Mine just spit out a game for no reason for the first time, and I have a day one PS4. So mm -hmm. you know, some people are having terrible luck. I know he's saying this is with the Slim and with the pros. Yeah. Um, but yeah, mine's just now starting to act up, if anything. So uh, I'm wow. what it's worth, I can't remember the last time we actually put a disc in my, my the one Stacy uses, which is a day one. Uh huh. But I feel like it wasn't that long ago I put something in there and, and it has, I've never noticed it having any issue either. Mm. Um, it makes me wonder that if I wonder if part of the issue was because I just left the disc in there. I never no, took it out. So every time it, it starts, it starts to spin. It spits the disc out a little bit and then puts it back in like every time as it's booting up, almost as like it's just checking to make sure that it, it senses something there. And so it's doing it and that like that every time I've had a disc in, that's what it does if I just boot it up. So it makes me wonder all that back and forth thing over and over and over when I was never really using it. I wonder if that had anything, not that that caused it, but that, that maybe that exacerbated the issue perhaps. Mm -hmm. I don't did really you, know. Did you but, see that on the internet? Like rocket back and forth. People said do that. No, nobody said that. I was just doing that because once the videos that I saw, they wow. said literally they just stood it up and you put it in the disc and it reads fine. And the first time I did that, it did. That's how it worked. That's how I got it to read the disc and actually load everything on the PlayStation 4. But then today I booted it up and went to go start Death Stranding and it 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 was just doing the same thing it was doing as the one it was sitting flat. Oh, so I, I took the disc out waited a few seconds or so and put it back in and then I just slowly started moving because it's like it's almost as though it's, there's something in there that's not catching yeah. and so when you stand it up it's like gravity makes it go down towards where it needs to so I was just like well I don't know maybe if I move it it'll seed into where I, I mm -hmm. have no idea what the actual problem is but like maybe that will help and I did it and it helped so weird but wow. I mean I don't know if the next time I boot up the game if it's gonna work or not I'll tell you what rocking it back and forth is <laughs> Don't do that if you're listening to this. <laughs> right? <laughs> only, only because. I mean, you I just, wouldn't suggest others do it. It's what I'm going to do if I can't get to no, work. I'm saying, I've yeah, to work you before. go ahead and do it. I'm just saying, we're yeah. not encouraging other people to rock your PlayStations back and forth as the disc is going in there. I remember, <laughs> no. um, I remember uh, Toby's kids just moving their Xboxes one time and it scratched the mess out of the disc and the disc never no worked. No way. Again. Is that oh, right? Yeah. That's terrible. So I don't know if that was, that was back on the 360, in the 360. Uh, well, level, my recommendation is buy digital. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? Yes. That's been your yes, it is. Parts at all. Time. Or, yeah. you know, I don't know. Anyway, yeah. so that's what I'm dealing with at the moment. I've been able to get past it. Hopefully it's not an issue for the rest of the game. Um, yes. Otherwise, like, doggone it. I don't, it's like, you don't want to buy it I'm twice. not going to return the collector's edition because right. I like it. And it's yeah. like, do I, do I buy this game digitally? So and would they I even can... let you return it? Like, is that even an option? Yeah, I don't. I don't even know if they would. Honestly, no, yeah, I, don't, I don't think I they it. do that anymore. Yeah, I don't. I don't wow. know how that all how all that stuff works because I buy them so infrequently, even though I have about four or five of them right. from this gen. <laughs> um, so Death Stranding, the game. Yeah, yeah, sir. Kojima. It is a game, uh, but it's not a game in the traditional sense by any means. Um. Here's what I'll say. And How I said far this are you in? Sh I, do what? How far are you in, you think? How many hours? Uh, I am much further than Ed. I made it to chapter three, which chapter three oh, nice. is the mark where people tend to say like, oh, and once you get here, that's where it kind of like opens up a bit. But I literally just crossed over to chapter three. Mm -hmm. So I've probably played close to around 10 hours, but I don't know exactly. Right, I was okay. not doing much of the side stuff, which are just side or side uh, deliveries, deliveries you can do. There's mm -hmm. When you go into a, a, an area... 
and you go to pick up a delivery, there's ones that say del- or, or an order for Sam, and then there's like general orders or whatever it says. The general orders are basically just side quests to earn more XP and, and yada, mm-hmm. yada, yada. So I had, through the reviews and, and some of the audio stuff that I had listened to, it was like, look, if you, you want to see, you want to get to the chapter three, so if you really just want to focus on that, don't really worry about the side stuff because in the beginning it's not super helpful. I mean, if it's, you just want to do it, great, and you will earn XP, but it, you're not going to earn enough to where it seems like it's like, oh, I really should do this. Hmm. So like, oh, get okay, to chapter right. three, and that's where things will open up. And then they said, then you can start doing whatever the heck you want. So I just, for the most part, focused on doing the main stuff. Um, I did do a few side things, and there'd be a few times where, oh, there's not a, a story mission here right now, so you have to go just do a couple things, and then it will, it will populate or whatever. Or hmm. l- unless I wasn't triggering it, and maybe there was something I was doing. Um, one thing that I will say is that I, I don't feel like Metal Gear really lays everything out on how to play the game, the actual mechanics of the game, but I think that it does a pretty good job about leading you along. I feel like mm-hmm. this game, even less so, it does mm-hmm. not hold your hand really for m- much at all. Mm-hmm. Um, there's one, something that I, I typically don't really partake in in video games is reading stuff. And there's a lot of stuff that gives you, there's backstory in this that gives you through like emails that you can read. Oh, that kind of stuff. Yeah, that kind of stuff. Like, I don't mind. One thing that I really liked about that, because I had to listen to them for, to get the platinum for Metal Gear Solid 5, they had a bunch of stuff like that. But what it was, was it was cassette tapes. And you could just be Mm -hmm. out in the open world and you could just go to it, play the cassette tape so you can listen through it while Uh, you're doing other things. mm -hmm. I really wish that's how Death Stranding was. <clears throat> but it's not, it's their emails. Now they're not super, at least to this point, they're not super long and a lot inside the emails, the part that's important, if it's something they feel like you really need to know, will kind of be highlighted in yellow. And so you just read a little oh, bit really? before that, read that oh, sentence and a little bit after to get some context and you you get the information that you need. But I mean, once I get to chapter four or whatever, if I'm going to have like 35 unread emails, I'm not reading that crap. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just not going to do it. Ed, do you um, read emails? Do you read that stuff? Uh, I, I, do, I do. Yes. Wow. Just because I've found how much story that they bury in there. Yeah. So I've started uh, in the last few games I've played, I've started reading everything. Interesting. And from what I've read, some of them explain, you know, maybe how a system works a little bit more. Not that you can't figure it out otherwise, but it gives you a little more context. And then other ones are just little things like, Oh, this guy is telling you about his brother that you met down the road or something like that. A story about a fun story, just, I guess, to help get some rapport or whatever. I don't know. But then other things seem like they're important to the story. Like, I don't know that I would have known that had I not read that. But at the same time, I'm not going to read them. I'll read a few (laughs) of them, but I'm not going to. Once it gets to the point where I'm backlogged, (laughs) like, nah, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not doing that. I didn't do it in, I didn't do it in Metal Gear. I only Uh did the ones where it had the, uh, the, the cassette tapes. I didn't do it in Horizon Zero Dawn. You'd go to those terminals and you'd see these emails. And oh I was my like, gosh, oh, dude. Oh, that seems like that'd be a cool story. Somebody cliff note this crap and I'm going to nah. go on. <laughs> you know what's funny? Dude. I don't read any of that stuff either, man. If, I if, just don't get, I don't oh, have time for that. I, I, do. I got a game to play. If I'm playing Last of Us, you come across a journal entry or something like that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's 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 Skip. going to somebody's grave because oh, I, I don't no, know what that's that funny. Oh, I will open them and, and see. And if it's like a paragraph or something, sure. But if it's like a full note, it's like, oh, I bet that's a great story. <laughs> oh, I'll man. Oh, <laughs> Same way. And I'm with you, man. Here. Like, come on, read them. It's that really it just makes just yeah. make, it just makes it makes the game you appreciate the game more, and it kind of gives you just some stuff that you would you would totally most of the time overlook. Again, I, I really oh, feel no, like man. Kojima did it the best way out of any game in Metal Gear Solid 5 where it was cassette tapes and you could do and you could just be doing stuff in the world yeah, and I, listen I would, to them. And I the fact that Death Stranding's in a futuristic world where you've got this wireless network and all this stuff and holograms, could have been easy to just have like, you know, <laughs> hit the button and <laughs> beam it to my ear while I'm going. <laughs> That's, That's true. Hilarious. And who knows, maybe it'll show up that that'll be a thing later on in the game. But right now... They want me to read emails, and that's not happening. <laughs> as Amazing. far as the actual game goes itself, I'm having a good time with it. Yay. Um, I good. don't know. I still, It's still at that point where it's like, I don't know if this is going to wear thin pretty soon, and I'm going to be over it, or if I'm mm-hmm. going to like it even more. I just I don't really know. It's not a game I feel like. Like with Metal Gear, I would tell almost anybody, I'd be like, well, let me see what kind of games you like, and maybe I'll think it's not up your alley. But most people, I'd be like, yeah, you should dabble with Metal Gear. At least try it. Like Metal Gear Solid Five, 
I don't feel comfortable recommending this game mm. to anybody, really. Right, right. I mean, I do ah, feel like it's God. I do feel like it's doing things that kind of would be cool for people to experience. But I mean, at right now at like a full price game, I I just can't recommend it. I mean, because mm. it's I just it's so hard to know who's going to be into it and not. Like, now that I'm at this point, if Gay or excuse me, if Ed hadn't started playing, I probably would say, "Hey, Ed." Maybe you should jump in. I think you could possibly get into this, but it, it'd be like yeah. a 50-50 shot, you know? I, I just, right. I don't know how it's going to go. And at the moment, I'm, like I said, I'm enjoying my time with it, but I also went into it knowing what I'm getting into. Right, If I right. came into this blind and this is what it was and I was expecting something different, I'd probably be very irritated right now. Mm. <laughs> I'm not finding a lot of trouble with the controls, really. And I, I, yeah. a lot of other, I, like, I'm just playing on normal. Mm-hmm. Um, I've barely fallen down and stumbled. That seems to be an issue that a lot of people are having. Yeah. I don't know if I just figured it out. I, I don't know what I I'm doing differently. I think you guys might not be long, far enough yet because everybody I see fall down has like the Eiffel Tower stacks. on their back. Yeah, they're like stacks well, and well, stacks The and thing stuff. is, is that early on, you have the least balance. Oh, As really? your, your stats go up, like a baby not falling? only can you carry more weight, but you also have more balance. And then things are introduced in the game to help with that kinds of stuff as well. Yeah. So in theory, the further along you get, yes, your amount that you're carrying may get bigger, and so that will keep it a bit unwieldy. You're not like su Superman right at the beginning either. Got it. Mm -hmm. Definitely, like the first few times, I was like, oh, okay, I got to figure out because there is a mechanic where you have to do some stuff to help keep maintain your balance. Right. But I and I just guess I found a trick around it to where it just works almost all the time. Hmm. And so, mm -hmm. hey, I don't go know. for it. That works. <clears throat> So we'll I, see. I, I am enjoying it right as far as right now. I'm at chapter three, like I said before. Looking forward to see how things open up from here because pretty much everybody has said chapter three on is when it really starts to branch out and do a lot more things. Relatively speaking, I mean, I'm not expecting to start flying around like with a jetpack or anything like that. Um, <laughs> right. But we'll see. <laughs> we'll, I will report back next week and maybe I'll be done with it. Who knows? I yeah, right. Really, I really have no idea. Chris, compared to the Phantom Pain, do you think that this is way more cinematic versus gameplay than the Phantom Pain was? Um, well, the first chapter one, and then I'd say maybe even in chapter two, I, there was a, it's probably shoot almost 70, 30 cutscene to gameplay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I would say wow. chapter three and what uh, getting right before you get to chapter three. And then now I'd say there's cutscenes I can tell are getting less okay. and there's more game. Yeah. But yeah, yeah I mean, when I'll Kojima ask that came question out, next week then. <laughs> yeah, when Kojima came out uh, a week or so ago and was like, yeah, Kojima's, Kojima Studio is going to, at some point, is going to make movies or something like that. It's like, yeah. you absolutely know, like, this is the direction Kojima wants to go. Right, I mean, yeah. So it, it makes perfect sense for him to go that route because his games have always had a cinematic flair to them anyways. And I feel like it's gone more and more that way the more he's done. Right. Yeah. So, Yeah. Chris, I, I can't remember how Metal Gear went, and maybe this is also a Kojima thing, but one thing that really threw me off, well, two things, mm -hmm. is whenever a song starts to play, the credits come up like old school MTV. Yeah, the yeah, cryons. You know, I noticed that early on, <laughs> but so now at this point in the game, if a song comes on, I don't notice the credit, and it never stays on the screen. Somebody had made mention, they're like, oh, I hate how the credit comes on and just stays there for the duration of the song. It's like, I don't remember it staying the whole time. And I don't remember I, it staying the whole time either. Yeah, earlier tonight, there were two times where a song came on, and it did not, there was nothing, I purposely looked around the screen and nothing showed up, so I don't know if that's just an early on thing. Right, or if I changed a setting that I didn't realize, I'm maybe not it's sure. the first time the song plays. You know, yeah, that like, could be. But every well, time? I've not. I don't think I've heard a song repeat yet. Hmm. Oh, interesting. I mean, it doesn't happen all the time, but it's probably happened six times since I've been playing. Maybe. And another thing is when they introduce a new character. <laughs> yeah, not only does the character's name come up, but also who yeah. plays him. Is that a Kojima thing? Yeah, that is a Kojima thing. That's so funny. So that, that threw does, me off as well. Does who plays him or who voice acts him? Uh, both. Well, yeah, kind of both now. That's kind of cool, though. So, like, it'll say, like, Gear, the doctor, Guillermo del Toro, and then the person who voiced him. Yeah. Because it's not Guillermo doing the voice. It's just his likeness. Right. right. Which and then the same, crazy. the guy who's playing Hartman, which I don't remember his name. Oh, and really? Then okay. Lin, uh, Lindsay Wagner? Is that how you say her yes. name? Yes. Yeah. So she played... 
she actually has two parts in the in the game. One of them she actually voiced herself. The other one is just her likeness and a different actor doing that voice, doing the voice for oh, that version. Weird. Of her. Mm. I guess he had to legal up the whole time ever since ever since he split. He's like, well, you know what? I'm just going to legal up and credit everybody now. So <laughs> yeah. I think it's kind of cool the way that the, the way that happens. That, I kind of like that. But he, yeah, I was going to say, I even that. been that way all the way back to Metal Gear. Like when when Snake right? would come up, it would say Solid Snake. And in parentheses, it would say, or I don't remember if it said voice by, but it would have the actor's name and say David Hayter. And then when you got to Revolver Ocelot the first time, it would say who's voicing him underneath it. That's, That's cool. So yeah, it's always I kinda been dig that, way. that Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, that's cool. Glad you're enjoying it, Chris. That's good news. Yeah, man. Yeah, me too, man. I am as well. I hope it continues. Because it's been a long time coming. Mm-hmm. This that is, is not how Final me. Fantasy is going to go. <laughs> yeah, right. it is. You're going to love it. <laughs> oh, uh, man. Well, I, I, I you can't wait. You know Tim's wait. not. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Chomping at the bit over here. I know, but that's where our joy is going to come in. <laughs> yeah, well, sure. Exactly. <laughs> Just, <laughs> listening to him play it. Uh-huh. <laughs> Tim Router. Yes, sir. How you doing, bud? You at Disney or anything? No, no, I'm home. I'm home freezing my butt off like everybody Dude, else. It's so cold in it. It is. It's kind of, mm. I, I kind of like it though. It's kind of nice. Now. I, asked, I, like, I, I saw some random person at the factory today when I was there. I was like, did you enjoy the uh, week of fall we got before yeah, exactly. it dove into winter? It is so I know. cold. And like all the leaves are gone. There's like, we had like a day of color. And then all the leaves are gone because we had the storm come through and everything just blew away and we yes. had wind gusts and wind chills and the whole night. But yeah, man, um, this past weekend, it was actually a little hectic in the Router family because uh, Lauren had a big uh, balloon, uh, a couple of balloon orders, one of which was a wedding up in East Nashville. Mm-hmm. So your boy was kind of helping her out <laughs> deliver about 20, 36 inch balloons in a oh van. Oh my gosh, dude. Took me an hour to get up there on Saturday because traffic mm. was terrible. Then realized that we forgot one. No, 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 you didn't. So Lauren had mm. to, uh, after Piper had cheer practice on Saturday, Lauren had to go to the store, grab the balloon. I met her halfway at like 100 Oaks at Home Depot just to go back up to the wedding venue to drop off. one. And it was like the, the balloon that they wanted the most. And I'm like, oh, you got to be oh, kidding me. Man. So <laughs> oh. three hours in a van on a Saturday is, is Shoot. a lot of fun. Fun, but you it all rather been at cheer practice. Yeah, right. Exactly. Uh, speaking of cheer, we had another cheer competition on Sunday. Dang, y'all eight, pumping them out, ain't you? Eight o'clock in the morning at Brentwood High. Like these people aren't even Christian. I don't even know what that's all about. <laughs> or maybe they are because you get up early. You can get up early. We basically did a sunrise service at, at cheer. <laughs> exactly. So. <laughs> What's there to even cheer about that early? I know, right? right? But uh, we're in the the thick of the cheer competition season right now, and my the girls did awesome. They got first place out of two, but they still Whoa. got first oh, place. Hey, which that's is better great. than last time. Yeah, right? and and thank the Lord they got their bid for nationals. Oh, so good. It was so exciting to see all their faces light up when the number two team was was announced first and then when they said their team like the whole they just during the little award ceremony like lauren got a great picture of piper she just had this look of sheer joy everybody was hugging and it was a great time so i'm super proud of her and her team they put a lot of work in this past week like they had what four practices uh, before this competition, uh, we do have another one this weekend. Lord and, uh, have mercy! Because well, what they did was because they didn't get their bid the week before, they decided to enroll in two more competitions just to hopefully just ensure that the, you have to get a certain amount of points. I somebody explained it to me that you have to get a certain amount of points, either per competition or cumulatively. Um, as you go in order to get a bid to nationals. And so with this performance that they did this past weekend, they actually, they, they got it just single-handedly on that, just because of that routine. They did great. Nobody slipped and uh, everybody did really well. So yeah, it was, it was awesome. That was a thing that people were slipping. Well, Uh, when, when you're, when you're, when you bring the girls up, like they're the other team actually had like three falls. Oh, like snap. Oh, wow. not not like fall backwards and anything, just like slip ups, meaning like when they would go up, they lost their balance and came back down. And so that's that's basically what that is. And of course, it's like you, you get deductions for all that. I'm learning all this wonderful thing about cheer and judging and competition. But, and then are you at a, uh, are you going to Disney? Is that Disney? 
That will be in Orlando in February. Yes. So the we are. We, oh, okay. Nice. Yeah. The Nationals are in uh, in Orlando. So we will be able to go to Disney. I honestly don't know how much time we'll have to do any like park yeah. hopping or anything like that. It's going to be pretty crazy. The The kind of cool thing about it is like one of it starts on her on Piper's birthday. Her birthday is February 8th. And so that's when the competition starts. Sick. So it's kind of fitting for her because she's just all in and, and just that's loves cool. this. So it'll it'll be fun. We'll celebrate her birthday down there. But uh, it was really great for them to to, to get the bid. And, and so I'm super proud of her. And and like I said before, like this is her first real thing that she's like uber passionate about. And so we're just feeding yeah. that fire and she's just super excited about it. And, and I love seeing that. And so we're just, we just continue to build her up and continue to encourage her. And yeah, she's going to have bad days, but you just keep practicing and, and she's in man, she's in all in. And it's, it's, it's really cool to see. Nice. So, um, yeah. So like I said, we got another one this weekend and then I think we'll be done for a while. Um, got my, got my Disney plus action going on. Hey, already oh. watched episode nice. one of the Mandalorian and it's great. And, um, people are man, saying, dude, Disney plus did it right. 10 million subscribers in its first day. Good. Just like gracious. that. And, uh, they, they are really doing it right. The interface is really nice. It, it, I mean, I finally get to watch Avengers Endgame. I haven't been able to see it yet. So this weekend Wait, I'm going to spend some time. Yeah. <laughs> you heard me. <laughs> You heard me correctly. I have still not seen Holy Endgame. Holy crap. So, uh, and, and you I still, don't know what happened. And I don't know what happened. I specifically There's made no sure. There's no way you don't know what There's happened. There's no way I you have don't know. I specifically made sure <laughs> that nothing, like I haven't watched the new Spider-Man. I haven't watched anything. Anything related to Avengers, I avert my eyes. Why oh, have you not snap. seen it? I don't even go to the movies. I don't like the movie theater I know, and I've seen I it was, twice. I was the going theater. to see it. I know I was going to see it, but I just never got around to it. So yeah. it's there front and center. <laughs> yeah, sure. karate, Chris, come on, man. <laughs> he ain't right. got all day. That's right, man. So I'm I'm super excited. So I will I will watch that this weekend. But wow. man, they did it right, man. Disney Plus. I think they're <laughs> they they're on to something. It's great for us as a family because Piper loves a lot of the the Disney movies. There's some good originals yes. on there, and there's some <laughs> of course some all of the Disney older people. Disney seasons. Exactly. exactly. What was the first thing you guys watched? That was a big topic on Twitter about what people's first things they watched on Disney Plus was. What was your first thing? Very Mine first was thing. the Mandalorian. Well, here's the problem: the, the problem screen is, that said you couldn't connect. Right. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, server issue. The, actually, the problem is that Xfinity does not have a Disney Plus app yet on sure their doesn't. system. Sure so did. we're kind of oh, wow. like, so I basically, now we have, uh, we have the latest, uh, Apple TV, uh -huh. so they should have an app there, but that's in the bedroom. So, uh, we, you know, and in the living room right now, we haven't done anything. It's really just been me wanting to watch the Mandalorian. So that's, that's what I did. And, uh, it, it, and it's great. But, so you watched you know, it where? On your phone watched, or computer? I watched it on my computer. Oh, yeah. okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it was. It was perfect, and uh, and I love it. Looking forward to this series. I think it's going to be really good. John Favreau did an amazing job. Uh, is that who's just, doing it? Yeah. yeah, he's a beast. Yep. Gosh, he he's is a beast. man. He really is, and that's the one thing that that really attracted me to this series. I I I gotta say, I am getting a little bit of the Star Wars burnout. And, Are you? Uh, yeah, I think. Well, like, you get it after, once a year. I know, right? But after December. Like, I'll, I, you know what? I, I was probably the last Jedi that did it for me because I did not like that movie. Yeah. And, a lot of people and said so that. this one, I think, I think this one, JJ is going to do us right and, and, That's and right. wrap it up with a bow. And then I think I'm done. And, and that'll be fine. The great thing is, though, with Disney Plus, I can go back and watch all of them if I want to. And I yep. probably will. Yep. And, um, and get that going. So great service. Highly recommend it uh, if you get a chance and if you like Disney. Uh, as much as we do, you'll be all over it. So that's good stuff. Um, on the gaming front, uh, I have I pretty much hung up Borderlands three now. I've did I've done all the trials. I've done nice. all the Slaughter Star stuff. I've got a ton of money, and, and you know it it was it got to the point where I was just running around, and then there was like a couple uh, a couple side mission assassin kills that I had killed pe these people before, and I'm like, all right, are they kind of repeating this now, or what's going on? So. I was at a great spot, and I'm like, "All right, I'm done." So, no plat um, on this one? No, I'm not going to do the plat on, because okay. some of it requires co-op and 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 a few. I looked at the tro trust me, I looked at the trophy list, and <laughs> I'm like, "Yeah, there's some stuff that I'm just probably not going to be able to get to." Yeah. So I've decided to rip off that cellophane 
and play some Watch Dogs 2, wow. baby. Yeah, wow. I went back a little bit, which is unlike me, but <clears throat> uh, I like it so far. I think it's really, good. really good. They uh, they hit you with a lot, though, right at the get-go. So I'm Boy, trying do to, they. I'm, I'm kind of like... Uh, I, I felt like I an old s- man playing that game. I was like, I know, okay, I'm like, they do what now? Yeah, exactly. What's hmm. what's this what's this mobile device thing I gotta do? Oh man, there's uh, lines going everywhere. The text is so small. Yeah, it's but it's really intuitive though. I love how the menus on your phone and everything, and like there's different apps you can download, and but they do hit you with a lot. So I'm just I'm still wrapping my head around it. Mm-hmm. Um, but man, it's it's Ubisoft, man. I love the way they're they're doing this. Uh, you know, and I was able to jump on. Uh, we I did a, a quick little online uh, mission with somebody who I just ran into, and we just started going, and we we got oh, our nice. mission complete. We got our mission completed, and then both of us died, and then we were out. It was perfect. It was yeah. great. <laughs> and I don't have to talk. I don't have to talk to anybody. But it was really cool because like he was That's driving awesome. the car, I came up, he honked the horn, I got in, and boom, we just it was we were just using our <laughs> character's that body language to communicate, and it was really fun. Funny. It was really fun. We had a great time doing it. So like he would go one way, like we kind of followed each other around and it was, it was a lot of fun. It was cool. So I'm excited to kind of get into that, but yeah, I, I figured why not? Let's go with some Watch Dogs 2. That's the one game that's still in its, that was still in its cellophane that I'm like, nice man. man I really want to play it. Cause I like the first one. And, uh, and so, yeah, I'm excited to really get into this and, and having a good time with it so far. Uh, that's so cool. I'm glad. Yeah, man. That is it for me. Mr. Patillo. Hi. What you got? Oh, man, our whole family's sick, pretty much. Oh, oh no. man. Yeah, it's no. just, everybody's just got, like, allergies and mm. just craziness yeah. going on. And then I'm the freaking last of the Mohicans. Like, just, yep. I don't get allergies that bad, and I haven't gotten sick. And so I'm Oof. just trying to, like, hang on for dear life and be where I need to be for Jenny and for yeah. the kids. And uh, Mara stayed home from school today. Oh, and, poor uh, thing. Oh, yeah, wow. just because she was up coughing last night, we were like, "All right, we, we can't send you to can't send you to school." Sounded like that. you know what's sad. A lot of parents do though. They're like, "Yeah, you can still go." Yeah, exactly. I hate <laughs> that, man. I hate that Seriously, too. like we're we're kind of we're those parents, and I'm sure you are too. It's like, listen, if you've got any type of a low grade fever, you're fighting something. Yeah, I'm not. I am not letting anybody like nah, get man. sick. Strep throat, you are waiting 24 hours, and I mean a hard 24 hours until you go back after antibiotics For so you're not sure. contagious. Yes. Like, come on. So, and some people just, oh, you got a fever, you'll be all right. Really? No, like, nah, come on. That's man. how my kid gets sick, fool. Come exactly on, let's go. Exactly, in the first place. So, Ugh. you know, because I think, you know, a big part of it is the weather just diving off a cliff. Yep. Here. Yes. Um, yep. It was really nice, and then just got freezing cold. And last night, just, what, was it last night that it was sleeting just all night? Or was that yeah, two nights night ago? Before. Yeah, night before. Yeah, and so it's just like, it's just cold, man. Goodness mm. gracious. Um, Gotta say a uh, big old shout out to our veterans. It was Veterans yes. Day yeah. last week. We appreciate you guys, obviously. Uh, Ed came through with the with the big interview with his dad, which was, oh, so, was so cool. It was so fun to watch. Um, And uh, I really got to be around for a lot of Ed's stream, and that was really cool just to uh, <laughs> watch him... <laughs> <laughs> get tired what like it was just so funny because i watched a bunch of it during the day and then turned it off at night and then woke up and turned it on real quick in the morning oh, and it was like right before you were getting off and you're like ah thank y'all for being here like you just don't care he's not talking back to the chat anymore everybody's saying bye to him he's like so just you know have a good day and you got all right he's done he oh, was done so right? great. that's great it's so great and i'm not gonna make too much fun because my stream is this yes. weekend Yes, Ooh. it is. And so uh, I'll be starting Ooh. Saturday morning, going to Sunday morning. Ooh, uh, nice. On the docket is uh, the Call of Duty campaign. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Mario brother, the Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games story. I and I think, and I don't know how long the story is, but I might get that Jedi situation going on. Ooh, you know, just go to Redbox or something because I don't know. Yeah, you yeah. I don't know if I'll like it. So I'm going to just get the, uh, you know, go to Redbox and pick it up. Yeah, man. And see what it do with that. So those are the three things on the docket. And then obviously there will be some Apex in there. Obviously there's be some uh, uh, some of the guys, Frankie and, and Neebs, were saying that they want to do some Mario Kart. So we'll get some Mario Kart going for my Switch people and stuff like that. So nice. we'll see what it brings. I'm not as good at doing Jackbox Live like Ed is, so I'm, I'm a little scared to do that. And, you know, <sighs> usually nobody's watching, so. 
you know, I don't want to be Dude. by myself, but um, so uh, so yeah, it'll be it'll be nice. So um, yeah, that old twenty four hour stream, baby, y'all come by and hold the brothers' arms up and and yeah, and uh, donate. I will be there. I'll I'll be doing the um, I'm 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 taking a page from everybody else's book and doing morning to morning instead of like yep. I did last time, night to night. Yeah. Because you just don't get sleep before you start. Mm-hmm. And so yep. um excited to do that. It's just a nice like it's it's a tough thing to do. And so it's like a cool mountain to climb, I feel like. Yeah, definitely. Um have you guys ever seen um a a show called Shits Creek? Yeah. Yes. So they're doing a tour of like like a behind the scenes sit down. I think it's Eugene Levy and his son. And right. um, they're coming to T Pack, so me and Jenny are going to that tomorrow Ooh, night. No uh, way, yeah, dude! So we're super excited. Oh, She's watched that's every cool. episode. That's uh, such great. a fun She's show. Super excited. So uh, it'll be a little date night. We're excited to get out and and uh, have a date and go uh, that's see amazing. the Shit's Creek people. So that'll be really fun. I'm really looking forward to that. I've only seen a couple episodes, but mm-hmm. I love Eugene Levy. Yeah, yes. so, Eugene Levy. Yes. Uh, so he's he's worth price of admission to me. Yeah, definitely. And what's crazy is I bought this for actually as a gift, um, because if you remember, I'm not even supposed to be here right now. And so that's true. That's um, right. When November opened up, I was like, "Hey!" And she didn't have anybody to go with, and I I bought her two tickets just in case. And uh, I was like, "Can I go oh, with nice. you?" And she was like, <laughs> "I want you to go with me." I was like, "Okay, perfect." <laughs> hmm. Oh, that's great! Oh, that's man. awesome, man. Yeah, so I'm really excited about that, and you know, get some laughs in, get a good dinner in, not have to scarf it down because we're with children. Yep. <laughs> right. Um, and yeah, man, that's that's all that's been really been going on. I've been playing Apex, been playing Call of Duty, and you guys, I love Call of Duty. Nice. Yeah. All it's right. It's just so good, and this one feels so right. There was something about the last one I could not get with. Um, I played it a bl- bunch. I played Blackout, um, and there was just something I don't know what it is, but it was it. It just kind of leapfrogged. Like I loved World War II and played the mm-hmm. crap out of it. I played the story and everything, and then the last one, which I don't even remember what it was called. You remember what it was called, Chris? The one the before Infinity War, the four Black Ops Four. The one just 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 this one. The one before this one. Was it Black Ops 4? Yeah, that was Black Ops 4. Okay. Four. So didn't have a story, was only online, and I just, some about the guns and all the, the options you had, like, just was so overwhelming for me. So I'm not, I don't want to blame it on the game. I just think it was something about me in that game. I just didn't, I couldn't connect with it. But this one, for some strange reason, feels so good right away. And I haven't done any story because I'm saving it for the campaign. I mean, saving it for um, Extra Life. But just like jumping into multiplayer and actually being like doing nice. all right, I did terrible jumping into uh, Bo Four uh, on the last one. I mean, awful. I could not get a handle on it, and there was so many things you could do: have a robot, this, have a do, blah, 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 blah. and then. But I could do okay in World War Two, so I don't know. This just feels like I don't know. It's just oh, a little awesome, simpler. Man. It feels like I don't know. That's great, man. I'm glad you're loving it. Though. I am loving it. Me and Chris went in and played a little gunfight. That thing is so fun. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh! From the community, I played with our buddy EJ the other night. So that was really nice. fun. Um, so yeah, it was great. And so uh, I'm excited to jump into the campaign this weekend uh, and see what all that's about. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else gaming wise. I don't think so i got <laughs> i got my kids playing some crazy taxi and some nights into dreams on uh on the computer oh, today nice. off steam and they were loving nice it. had the bluetooth controller in there and that was really fun um i tried out <laughs> this is really funny i wanted to speak on remote play because i crap on it so much that i was like you know what you need to go ahead and give it a swing if you're gonna poo poo it so much and mm-hmm. so I got on my Android, my S9 Plus, and I was like, all right, let me connect the DualShock. No problem. Wireless controller. It sees it. It calls it a DualShock 4. Cool. Let me start up remote play. Oh, this doesn't um, this doesn't work with the DualShock 4. I was like, huh. Okay, that's weird. All right, well, <laughs> let me go over on my laptop, and I'll plug my USB cord thing in because it doesn't like it. Bluetooth on the laptop, so you have to plug it in so it knows that it's there. I'll start that up, and I started up some Apex Legends. And I was like, here we go. 
can't see anybody. I'm like, well, it's okay. We're shooting. It's laggy. We're doing okay, though. My team is carrying me. We're going. Bah, 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 bah. And then my battery starts to die. And I was like, oh, snap. Oh, snap. Oh, snap. I can't do anything. My battery dies. Then I was like, oh, shoot. We were down to like four teams left. Get on my phone. Get on like the controls on the screen, which are god awful. Oh. And my team <laughs> carried me to the victory. Nice. <laughs> the last hilarious. screen comes up. It's like this person got four kills. This person got three kills. I got zero kills and zero damage. I was like, okay, nice. <laughs> That's <laughs> amazing. <laughs> so, <laughs> they got to think I'm the most ridiculous. Like I can't imagine what they think was going on. Like seeing me run right. around, staring at the floor, <laughs> staring at the ceiling, turning around really fast, and then just stopping for like three minutes <laughs> as I was trying to start my phone up. Ugh. So needless so to say, so the verdict is you love it. Yeah, yeah my verdict is, is it's still junk to me. I, I just nice. I still, and we're gonna talk about it a little bit later. But it's oh, that's just, so funny. It's just still junk to me. All right, router. <clears throat> yes. You got it. Yes. Well, let's do. All right, new releases this week. We got a few uh, PC VR and PS VR. We've got Doctor Who, The Edge of Time. Ooh, what? We also have VR Ping Pong Pro. Do, 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 do. Mm. That actually would be probably fun. Yeah. Uh, we have Gollum for the PS VR. Oh, really? Yes. Mm -hmm. You know that one? Yes. I mean, that was had been teased or advertised or whatever. Not advertised, but like a little teaser for it ever since PS VR became a thing. As like these are the games that are in development for it, and Gollum, oh, yeah. is Gollum like November. Lord of the Rings, Gollum. No, it's I think it's actually pronounced Golem. It's like oh, G O L E M, yeah. o -L -E -M G -O -L something like that. Yeah. Oh, they will. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Got it. Okay. Well, that's out on uh, Friday, I believe, the fifteenth. Well, there you go. So there you have it. Mm. Um, I know everyone is uber excited for this one on the PS4, Xbox, Switch, and PC. <laughs> I can't believe I'm going to say this. B simulator. You heard me right. B <laughs> simulator. Like the can, bug, can, like that will sting as you. In, Get out of here. Yes. I got to pollinate. B simulator. Really? Right. Okay. Yeah. Cool. I don't know. They're All important, right. man. I, well, I know the importance. I love me some honey. Do I, need to the bees. do I need to play as we a bee? We would die without the bees? Yeah, man. Apparently. They're super important to the ecosystem. That's what scientists say. Yeah. What would, what would happen? The world would collapse into a wormhole. Yeah, I don't. Think I don't know so. about that part, but it yeah. would. It would. It would deteriorate. Like, there's so much that's dependent on bees and the and the, how they <clears throat> go around yeah, and populate. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. Like, it's way more than I ever thought. I was like, whatever. Bees aren't that important. I started doing some research. Like, oh crap. Yep, save mm -hmm. the bees. <laughs> yep. Really? Yeah. yeah. Apparently, well, it's a big, big deal. Well, now you can save <laughs> Apparently them. Apparently, it's a big, big deal. <laughs> <laughs> well, Chris, now you can save them with the Bee Simulator. So there you, there you have it. Yeah, uh, we have Rage, Rage 2 Terra Mania DLC for the PS4 and Xbox. Uh, Sparklight for the PC, PS4, and Xbox. Sparklight. And Switch. Sparklight. Mm -mm. Jumanji, the video game for the PC, PS4, Ooh, Xbox One, and Switch. Yeah, no thanks. Pokemon Sword and Shield for the Switch. Ooh, there's a lot of drama about that this week, boy. Mm -hmm. Goodness gracious, there was some drama. <laughs> and, and then the big one, Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order for the PC, PS4, and Xbox One. With the hair mm. helmet. Hair helmet. Here we go. Uh, this day in gaming, we're going to go 12 years back, yeah. November 13th, 2007, hmm. for the PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360. The original OG Assassin's Creed. Ooh. Oh, there you go. The OG uh, also, original redundant. OG redundant <laughs> in the dictionary. See redundant <laughs> Assassin's Creed. That thing was Play so redundant. Oh, my gosh. PlayStation 2 and PlayStation 3 also that saw that day the Need for Speed Pro Street. Oh, yeah. And for the PlayStation 2 and PSP, WWE SmackDown versus Raw 2008. Lord have Woo. mercy. Ugh. Okay. Seven years ago, November 13th, 2012, PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360, Call of Duty Black Ops 2. Mm. As well as for the PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360, Lego, The Lord of the Rings. Hey. There you go. 
that's been your this day in gaming back to you <laughs> gentlemen <laughs> chris mccracken yes tell me something so um we know that there's been um some shaking up i guess i should say and the leadership on the playstation side this so was we, crazy we saw, we saw um sean layden who was worldwide studios chairman he recently departed the company geo mm -hmm. corsi was announced the other day which he's been a big proponent of the vita and like working on a lot of third-party stuff and everything he was going to be heading out and then we've just had you know slowly it's been people have been kind of shifting around and moving and stuff and so on the andrew outside house is looking gone. in i'm just kidding yeah andrew which andrew house, i think he was, he's joking. one of the first ones that left right he's, he's well, I mean, if you look yeah. way way back yeah i was just joking yeah, well, I mean, it make it's when you look at it all over the generation. That's true. Or not the generation. Yeah, this generation, there's been more people. I feel like that have left Sony in a long time. Mm -hmm. You know, back to back kind of thing. So, uh, some people, especially like in our Discord and just on the internet in general, are kind of like, "Oh man, is this spelling doom for the PlayStation Five and the direction Sony's going to go because they're losing all this great talent and blah blah blah." Um, and they kind of took some steps where I feel like in the right direction this past week. So PlayStation has named Gorilla Games managing director and co-founder Herman Hulst as the new head of Worldwide Studios. That's oh, crazy. Wow. wow. Yep, he starts the role immediately and he will be managing all of Sony's game development across the 14 internal studios. When I Oosh. first saw this story, mm -hmm. I was like, "Oh, he's taking Sean Layden's place." No, no, right. no, no, no. Right, that's what I thought. Mm -mm. So whose place is he taking there, Chris McCracken? I don't know. <laughs> Shuhei Yoshida. No, 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 no. Well, Shuhei Yoshida was just the president of the Worldwide Studios, but I don't think, he, like, Sean Layden was even above him. Oh, was he? Yeah, Sean Layden was even above him. <laughs> Sorry, Gabe. Sorry, oh, I no. thought it was, I thought it was, I thought he was leaving. <laughs> Shuhei Yoshida's leaving? Well, he's leaving as well. He's stepping down from his Worldwide Studios position. Uh, I mean, I don't know if it's you. It's considered like a step down, but he is shifting roles. Yeah, he, he's not going to be the president of Worldwide Studios anymore. He's now going to be basically he's taking the position that Adam Boys had, where he's going to be over all third party relations and and uh, nurturing the the relationships that we have with indie developers and helping to make sure they're in the right spot and like securing games and making sure that they work well with the PlayStation and if they have any trouble there. Which anybody who's followed uh, Shuhei Yoshida on Twitter, probably this entire generation, knows he's really big in indie games. Like, he plays almost mm. all of them, it feels like. He's always tweeting about, like, oh, here's this game, here's that game, and I played this, and, and yada, yada. So, to me, it almost kind of feels like it's a great step for him. Like, I don't know from a terms of, like, status in the company. I don't know if this is a downgrade. I don't know if this is a lateral Well, he's move. stepping I don't really down know. to... <sighs> It's hard. So maybe I just don't understand business because when I think of the head of Worldwide Studios, I he think the of president the president of Worldwide Studios. And he's yeah, the, but he, so I thought that yeah. Herman was becoming the president and Shuhei was stepping down from being president because now he's going to be answering to Jim Ryan where he wouldn't have answered to him before, right? Shuhei Yoshida uh, answered to Sean Layden before. So he, he reported to Andrew House. Then yes. he reported to Sean Layden. Yes. Now he's reporting directly to the CEO of PlayStation. So it, from that standpoint of who he reports to, because like he's not going to report to Herman, he's reporting directly to the CEO of PlayStation. So president is not the top. No, president is not the top. It's like, and then what's head of? Where does that go in the, the line <laughs> of things? That That's more like... It, it depends on how your company uses that term head. That That's more of an ambiguous term. So I don't know for sure how that falls in the, the hierarchy of their system. Oh, um, but gosh. I'm pretty sure it's so, at one point, that at least, Sean Layden had the CEO of Worldwide Studios. I think he had that title at some point. It changed within the last year to chairman. And then, you know, he's clearly left on to do to green your pastures, whatever that may be. It's just so interesting because the story, the way it reads out to me, Mm -hmm. feels like they're talking about him and Shuhei stepping away or down or over or whatever. So it felt mm -hmm. like it felt like Herman was taking his place, but I guess that's not the case. Head and no. president are different. Yes, they are different. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. <laughs> mm -hmm. The way that I understand <laughs> it before the way that it was before was Shuhei Yoshida 
was the one who would go around to the worldwide studio team and make sure that they're on track and like would test the games and give them feedback and stuff like that. But he wasn't the one ma- like the buck stops here at the, at the decisions like, yes, we're going to make this game. No, we're not. That was Sean Layden. And that's who Shuhei reported to. He was more mm. like a second in command, even though his title is president. Think of it. If you think of it in terms of like a democracy structure of the U.S., he was almost like vice president in a way. And president is the the one would have been the CEO or the head. It actually he's the the top of the the food chain, so to speak. But this role, I'm assuming, doesn't report under Worldwide Studios or Herman because it said that Shuhei is going to report directly to Jim Ryan, who is PlayStation's CEO and president. So Ooh, that's sh- confusing to me because he's CEO and president of what? PlayStation. And Jim Ryan, you're talking Sh- about? <laughs> Shuhei was president of what? Worldwide, Worldwide Studios. Studios. Mm-hmm. Universal Studios. <laughs> no, Worldwide Studios. Worldwide there Pants. are a lot there are a lot of companies where the CEO <laughs> of that said company can be they can be both roles of CEO and president, but there are many other companies where they divide those roles into two and say like this is just the CEO and this is the president and they just so that the CEO doesn't have so much they have to do. But like if I remember right, I think uh, Elon Musk is the CEO and president or he was before he got in trouble with the SEC. And all that other stuff. Yeah, it just coming from a business world, this makes a little bit more sense. But every company can make their own titles what they want them to be. So there's not something that says it has to be that. It's usually CEO and president are the only ones that across business tend to have the same meaning. Everything else can be a little bit ambiguous as far as where it stays in the hierarchy. Because the business can choose that for themselves. Kind of like when their fiscal year starts and ends. They just choose it on their own. Mm. So That is confusing to your boy. And for people that... Don't, I think you already mentioned this, right? That Killzone, Horizon Zero Dawn, those are the the Guerrilla Games games. Yeah, so for many, many years, Guerrilla was mostly known for their Killzone games. And then even the beginning of this generation was Shadowfall. But mm. they kind of, I wouldn't say that they weren't known, but I, I would think the one that really put them on the map uh, was Horizon Zero Dawn, mainly because mm-hmm. they had always done these Killzone first-person shooter games, and then right. they completely branched to another area, and it... And was killed it. received yeah. like glowingly from almost everybody. So it was like, oh, wow. And then Herman's been, you know, the head of that and the founder. I believe he was the founder yeah, or co-founder founder. of uh-huh. of Guerrilla Games. And he's really well respected within, uh, definitely within PlayStation. And I could say probably also within just his industry as a whole. Um, anytime that there's, I'd say like the two biggest stars in terms of uh, studio heads are Herman and then probably... Um, the guy from Naughty Dog, his name's blanking on me now with the long hair. The guy doing The Last of Us 2, I'm blanking Neil? on his name. Drug- yeah, Neil. Neil. I would Neil say Drug- they're two, oh, yeah, like yeah. the two kind of shining stars of the leaders of these different studios that are, are a big deal. And Herman, because PlayStation seems like for the next generation, they're getting way more um, European focused. And so they're bringing up and promoting a lot of the people that are European and Japan and stuff and, and mm. everything. So then he's, he's from uh, Denmark, I believe, or... Uh, Netherlands. I don't remember exactly. Yeah. I like this though. I think this is really yeah. good. I think this is a really. You're right. I think it's a great st- step in a in a new, more exciting direction. So I, I'm I'm kind of excited for this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's got to be interesting for him taking such a big jump. I w- I mean, I would think it was a big jump going from you oh, know, yeah. a business yeah. that you helped start. Mm-hmm. And then being the head, whatever that means, of Worldwide <laughs> Studios. <laughs> oh, yeah, definitely, though. Yeah, and I think this is a great thing also for Shuhei Yoshida because since Adam Boys left, I do feel like they took a dip in their the indie side where not that they weren't still getting indie games, but it didn't seem like it was as much of a focus and much of a prominent, prominent feature because it, it felt like mm-hmm. indies didn't have like their well-known champion with inside of Sony. And that's not to say that they weren't still supporting indies because they definitely were. I'm sure there were people that were reaching out and creating those relationships, but it's nice to have a face that everybody knows, like this is the head of, you know, third party relations and small studios. And like I said, Shuei has always been a huge fan of those teams and those games. And so I think he's going to do great, which he did great. You know, he's been a big fan favorite for a while, most of this generation. So I'm excited to see what he does. And all this stuff, definitely like, I wasn't really worried about the direction Sony was going per se, but all this makes me feel even better because I feel like these are two really great, people to be putting in these positions. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Interesting. And now you talk for a little bit so I can drink some water. 
<laughs> <laughs> I can talk about how confused I am. Mm. Um, we can do that. So, and done. <laughs> and done. <laughs> um, so uh, I'll start with happy news. <laughs> okay. okay. We like okay. that. They did it, guys. They did it. Yeah, they did. Who? They did it. Who the did Sonic what? the Hedgehog people. Mm-hmm. Mm. They did it. They redesigned Sonic. They put out a new trailer, and it is way better. Yeah. Dude. I mean, Day it's not even nice. close. And it makes me like, I'm not a conspiracy theorist guy, but it makes me like start to believe the people that are like, they did this on purpose so that they could revamp and get another bump in uh, yeah, another bump in popularity. Right. Um, because it feels like when you go back now and watch the first Sonic trailer, mm-hmm. it's so bad. Like, yeah. And I remember us saying it at the time, like not only did Sonic look terrible, but he looked cut and pasted into some of the scenes. I remember mm-hmm. saying like, oh man, he doesn't even look like he's in that smoke. The way he's sitting in the car, it looks like he's really just standing and turned to the side where mm-hmm. this new character really looks like he's actually sitting in the car. And uh, right. It's just crazy. So two things. Y'all think they did it on purpose? No. I do not, no. They just thought the first one was a good idea. No gloves with sneakers and little eyes. I think they thought we're going to reimagine him a little bit, and they just didn't do it right. Or do you think think they they didn't realize how much people didn't want him reimagined? Oh, exactly. Definitely. Yeah. Bingo. Yeah, and I think a part of it probably was that I don't, who's make? do we know who's making it? Is it like Warner Brothers or do we know? I don't know. Well, whoever it is, I feel like they got the license and then they just did it. And mm-hmm. then they weren't like consulting Sega and, or whoever to be like, well, so what should we do? I think they're just like, oh yeah, the, the furry guy, the blue and he runs. Yeah, we got this. No big deal. No way. You think it was like that? I mean, yeah, I really do. I, or at least in part and maybe not fully, but I feel like part of it was like, oh yeah, we're good. Hmm. Oh, and I mean, this thing, he look, uh, and don't you feel like too, Ed, just from a trailer standpoint, the trailer just by itself is way better. You know, I told Sarah, oh, yeah. I was like, just not even forgot, forget about Sonic. I was like, it looks like fun Jim Carrey again. Mm-hmm. It, well, yeah. Number one, which is, yes. which is so nice to see. Like even in the first trailer, it was kind of like, oh yeah, Jim Carrey's in it. But here it's like, oh wow, he's being like Jim Carrey in it. Yes. It's just the, the trailer itself tells a completely different story than the last one did. Mm-hmm. Doesn't it? And you yep. hear Sonic like he's got the wit that everybody was begging for, like the snarky comments, like the fast talking mm-hmm. and just being funny. And you were like, where was all this the first time? Yeah. Who's doing the voice for Sonic? I don't I know. For, it, I forget. His, it's someone that I wasn't super familiar with, but he's not like the guy that does sonic from the games and the cartoons and stuff yeah okay yeah yeah um so another kind of cool story that came out of this was uh, a guy named tyson hess who uh was the director of uh sonic mania adventures which Mm -hmm. i actually don't know what that is i want to say it's like a comic booky type thing i actually don't know um but he was called on to help out with the redesign okay and uh he said he helped out with the mod he helped the modelers riggers texture and fur artists and the animators to help redesign Sonic. Nice. And like, mm. I don't know. It just was, I mean, this guy's fairly popular. He's got like 95,000 followers on Twitter, but I just like that. They brought in somebody they went to the source. Yeah. Right. Well, Cause like, right. obviously that's what I'm saying is like, they didn't bring in anybody at the beginning. Cause they that's what, like, that's oh, yeah, what blows this. my mind. I have this. no idea. I have no idea. <laughs> Like, it doesn't make any, like, it makes so little sense. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Um, Sonic Mania Adventures is a 2D cartoon animated series that was on YouTube in 2018. Oh, okay. And, and Ben so, Schwartz is the voice of Sonic. Ah, there you go. Um, good but old like, Schwarty. Good old Schwarty. Schwarty Schwartz. Schwartz. Um, but, like, when you see the difference in trailer and the difference mm-hmm. in Sonic, it just... It lends to like the there. <laughs> it just lends to how bad the first one was. 
Yeah. And like, I will go see this now in the theater for sure. Mm. Really? Yes. Mm. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I feel like number one, they did all this work to redo right. Sonic uh, at the behest of the internet. Mm -hmm. And so this is what's hard for me is like, I can't stand internet culture. Yep. But it got this one right. And so it's hard for me to support it because I knock it all the time. But at the mm -hmm. same time, like, I think this was done so well. Right. And the turnaround to me seems really fast. Yeah. I mean, that's, I mean, that's, that's a time consuming thing they have to do. You would think, right? When does mm -hmm. it come out? I movie? think it's supposed to be February. It was going to be November and mm -hmm. then got pushed back to February, I think. Interesting. So anyway, it looks awesome. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I showed it to my wife and she was like, oh, um, Remy will love this. And I'm so glad that Jim Carrey's being Jim Carrey. Nice. You know, which Jim yep. Carrey would hate to hear, right? He's like, we're not exactly. even here, man. We're not even really here, actually. <laughs> <laughs> right. Like Jim, when you sit down sometimes, yeah. man. Like, Stop Just be funny. Jim. <laughs> oh, Jim. <laughs> On the good foot. Yeah, exactly. So, anyway, I want to say we did it as a community of the internet, but I just can't stand giving us that kind of credit. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Chris, you had enough of a break? <laughs> yeah. Um, so, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we had heard um, some rumblings, anyways, and I think that we've actually talked a little bit about this in the past um, when there were rumblings that Apple was going to be working on some kind of AR style, mm -hmm. something similar to like HoloLens. Um, but now there's some reports coming out of Bloomberg that it's actually going to be a combination of VR and AR together, which I had not heard. And then this article that I brought up here didn't have it, but last week or the week before, there were some little murmurings about how that Apple's actually teaming up possibly on this one that Bloomberg is talking about with Valve to not only create what? it, but possibly put it together and, and like get it marketed out there. And their huh. Bloomberg and the article before that was mentioning Valve all are saying that this is going to be gaming focused, which you might kind of imagine because the fact that VR, even to these days, is pretty much only gaming focused. Well, and mm -hmm. what else would it be focused on, you think? Yeah, I, I mean, well, the only thing is when I on the AR side, when I thought that's mainly was going to be like, I think more to like Google Glass and like Google Glass was not gaming focus per se it was like anything like you can be walking down you can get your notification or whatever so when yeah. i thought it was, it was gonna go that direction awful. well yeah but i mean it was a gen one project <laughs> and like if apple's gonna throw their hat at it i mean you think they would try to iterate in some respect i didn't think they just want to carbon copy it per se if, yeah. if especially if it didn't take off which yeah. it didn't google glass never went beyond developer units right i don't think so yeah did you ever get to try it no, I never did. I really wanted to just to check it, it out. It was so see. awful. Right. Oh, my gosh. I, I saw somebody at E3, mm -hmm. and I was like, can I just try that on? And he was like, yeah, no problem. And I was like, so you paid the $2,500 or whatever it was for? And he was like, yep. And I was like, how you feel? He was like, I feel like I wasted my money. And I was like, oh, oh man. dang it. Like what? I hate that. At that point, yes. or at any point, it, was it really just like you see your notification? Like, what do you even do with it? I didn't understand. I mean, it was supposed to be able to. So I had a camera on there so you could say, you know, hey, Google or whoever, whoever you're talking mm -hmm. to, record this or take a picture of this. Or um, you could say, you you know, it would be your directions. Like if you were needed walking directions or driving mm -hmm. directions somewhere. But it really like to me, you know how cameras rack focus? You know, mm -hmm. like your eyes rack focus, like oh, someone, yeah. something close, something far away. It was so close, though, that like everything in the background was like extremely blurry. So it's like if you were to use it in your car or something like that, you rack focus to that close thing. And that's a you're driving blind for five seconds. Mm -hmm. It's not like yeah. glancing over at your phone. And so mm -hmm. um, I actually have a picture of me somewhere. I think I put it on our Twitter however long ago that was uh, wearing it. But it's like. And it just kind of looks stupid and like it kind of caused people to <laughs> stare and, you know, it didn't have, I don't remember it having a, a bridge for your nose. So it was just like a wire that went across yeah, your forehead. Yeah, no, it didn't. And so like, and it was heavy on one side because that's where all it housed all the components. So I'm really oh, interested right. because I think that Apple, one of the things that I super respect about Apple is like, I don't think they invent anything, but they sit mm. back, yes. watch mm. other people invent something and then perfect it and make it really sexy looking. Right, And so I'm interested to see how they would do a VR. I, I don't know if it's VR, AR combined, 
Mm-hmm. But yeah, I mean, they're saying a headset that combines both. So it's, I'd just be really interested in how you do that because to be VR and not AR, it needs to close off. Mm-hmm. But to be AR, it needs to be open. I don't know, man. I never saw the HoloLens or got to try it out. So I, yeah, I just, I don't know. I'm interested to see it though, for sure. Yeah, I... I... <laughs> I, I really don't know the direction is going. It's so weird because yeah, on the iOS side, which uh-huh. fortunately for them is phones, iPads, even though they're technically their names are different now. And then the Apple TV stuff is basically all built off the same architecture. They kill it on the game side over there, at least in terms of like quantity and everything like that. Of course, they always so, have. But it's like, it's funny to me how, you know, because Oculus is, or, or, or excuse me, not Oculus, the Vive was getting support on mac os and everything it's like okay so cool you got all this gaming stuff over here like make it to where your games can play your computers can play the games i know because i mean you started mm-hmm. out that way like why why did and i understand like along the way you know you shift focus cool whatever but it's like you're clearly tra- getting yourself back into being gaming focused at least on one of your platforms why right. not do it on all of them but i don't know we'll see where it goes and what it's going to end up being it's all just still speculation town at the moment yeah so. i mean we know a couple things yeah. It'll look good, and it'll be expensive. Unfortunately, Siri will be a part of it, probably. Maybe, yeah. and I think Siri's awful. In com- when you compare it to uh, Google and Alexa, mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't know. Is that something see. you would get? Oh, Alexa. <laughs> 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 uh. <laughs> Is it something that I would get? Yeah. Oh, I don't know. I'd have to see what it actually is and what it costs and what it does. I mean, at the moment, I, I'm not su- super intrigued by iOS games for me personally. So if, if that's what it is, just a 3D or kind of VR-ish way to play mobile games, then nah, I'm not that into it. But and I feel like it's going to be something better than that. Have you seen that. augmented reality done well yet? I, I haven't really got to try augmented reality in any... I mean, I guess technically I have because, you know, there's games or things you can get on your phone where it'll put like a chair in the room you're like oh yep. my gosh it's like the chairs there yeah but outside of that i've not really messed around with it so i don't have much experience one way or the other yeah and that's what i was gonna say is like i feel like when something is about to hit you would at least feel the murmurings of it mm-hmm. yeah and i feel like we haven't felt the murmurings of ar it's a yeah. it's a great idea and we yeah. see it in pokemon go and we see it in all this stuff but like mm-hmm. it's yeah, i guess not... that's the best example of it so far has been in right terms but of that's success. still like really shaky so i i I don't know yeah like yeah pokemon go and the harry potter game they both have ar and i'm like "Eh, that's kind of cool but it eats my battery so i'll turn that off yeah (laughs) yeah exactly Exactly. because it's not that good (laughs) yeah (laughs) oh man all right (sighs) i don't know if you got can you guys hear that train that hype train no Hmm, I, i do not Listen really close. See if you can hear it. Come on, Roddy. I got to take it. <laughs> okay, I don't hear it either, but Stadia is coming out like really soon. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. I don't hear that train. November 19th. It comes out next week. Ooh. I'm not trying uh, to hear that train. <laughs> <laughs> and they announced their launch titles, mm-hmm. um, which they're launching, <laughs> launching with 14 games. Okay. Mm-hmm. Or, tw- sorry. 12 games. Oh, no, sorry. My bad. Sorry. Shoot. I, would, I really would try to undersell it. Um, Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Okay. Destiny 2. Yeah. Guilt, which I think is one of their games. Just Dance 2020. Kine or Keen. Huh? Kine. It's one oh, of their okay. games too. Mortal yeah. Kombat 11. Mm-hmm. Red Dead Redemption 2. Ooh, okay. Samurai Showdown. Mm-hmm. Huh? Thumper, which I oh, think is yeah, one of their okay. games. And then three Tomb Raider games. There you go. Um, so if this was it. 10 years, that's it. If this okay. was 10 years ago, then 12 games would be okay. If this was 20 years ago, 12 games would be amazing. If this was like 30 years ago, nobody was releasing 12 games at launch. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's not in the past. It's today. And I think the PlayStation launched with 22 games. Did it, that was going to be my question. I don't remember how many games. The PS4, not the yeah, PS3, I, don't remember. I think, launched with 14 games or something like that. Mm-hmm. 
Um, I looked it up. Really, the other it was day that many? I, I don't remember it being that many. Maybe it wasn't. I think it was somewhere around there. Yeah. Um, they do say that 14 more games will be coming by the end of the year. Those are okay. Attack on Titan 2, Final Battle, Borderlands 3, Darksiders Genesis, Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2, Farming Simulator 19. Uh, why is not Farming Simulator 20? I don't know. Final Fantasy 15, Football Manager 2020, Ghost Recon Breakpoint, Grid, Metro Exodus, NBA 2K20, Rage 2, Trials Rising, and Wolfenstein Youngblood. Okay. Here's mm -hmm. the problem. Yes. Nobody is talking about this thing. <laughs> no, no one is. And the thing that bugs me is this is supposed to be the future. Like, this is the thing that everybody's saying. This is what we're going to. It's streaming. It's Google. And I saw a story today, and I didn't bring it up, and I didn't put it in the, in the thing because I didn't want to get too far into it. But they said developers are scared. That, and this is what Ed said. They're scared to dive too far in because they're, they're scared that Google's just going to stop doing it mm. out of nowhere. Mm. And I was like, that is so telling because there's no excitement for it. Um, yeah. Even when you go to Stadia's Twitter and read the, and I know in the comments it's usually going to be the negative people. Yeah. Um, but they're like, no. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Even in our own Discord, you know, we have a pretty positive place. I think yep. a bunch of people have canceled their pre-orders and stuff like that. And wow. I know Stadia was something that was on the fence for Chris to pre-order. Yeah, he was thinking about right. getting that, um, whatever it's called, the Founders Edition. Yeah. But you ended up not doing it, right? Yes. And you've probably got the best internet out of all four of us. Yes. Um, at the but moment. Like, yeah, at the moment. Um, but then they kind of came out and said, too, that there's like a bunch of stuff at first that's going to be missing. Um, yeah, at long is this is more the kicker. H hang on, before you get to the the that that stuff. Yeah. <clears throat> so, something to just to try to find a little bit of not not even silver linings, but just to give them a little bit of a boost here. Sure. One thing it's is coming it, out. They, I'm just they yeah. <laughs> they they did say from the beginning at the when they were you could pre order and all that kind of stuff like that. I think the first three months are only going to be accessible to whoever pre-ordered the founder the first, thing first group. yeah and yeah. I, I i think if i remember correctly there was even a somewhat limited like you couldn't just it, it couldn't be 12 million people if they if they signed up for that i think they had somewhat of a limit i don't mm. really remember off the top of my head what that is and i may be making that up i just feel like i remember that being a thing uh -huh. and so it was always going to be a bit of a slow start anyway so hopefully by the time that these 14 other games come out it's I think in February is when it's supposed to open up to everybody. Yeah. Uh -huh. And then on top of that, well, I mean, I, I guess that's really it. <laughs> More than I think about it. Because I, I mean, think it's just, it's I just think like, it's still I, I, too I still am still, still super soon. interested in like, I'd love to give it a try, but it. Yeah, I'll try it at Best Buy or something. Well, but like, I don't even want to do that. I want to try it at home because I feel like that's going to be real world scenario because I'm not going to be playing on my phone and at Best Buy I would assume they'd have something set up to where it's going to give you the best possible experience that they well, can yeah, give you at you a store so. kind of yeah. thing I want to see what it's really going to be like but yeah. there's not really a way for me to try it until it gives the free version you know what I didn't know this either and I didn't um, I don't know if I even thought about it but it's considered its own system and so mm -hmm. anything that's not cross platform you won't be able to play with anybody else. So to play mm -hmm. NBA 2K, it's not like you can play with somebody on PlayStation or mm -hmm. play with somebody on Xbox or PC. It's yeah. only people that are playing on Google Stadia can play against people on Google Stadia. Yeah, right. And I don't know that it's worked into crossplay anyway. So, you know, say Call of Duty were to come to it, you know, maybe by the time it gets there, mm -hmm. it'll have it and they'll implement it all. But that's not something it's gonna have. So you're 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 shrinking the pool even further of people that you can even play against. And then all this like stream connect, state share, crowd play, like where people are gonna get in line when you're on YouTube and be able to play against those people. That's not gonna be at launch. <laughs> no. That will be right? next year. And then mm -hmm. I, that still goes to the issue. So if I'm on what do I have to be on to play you? And they said the, the controllers are going to be staggered out as far as shipping. 
Like, not everybody that pre-ordered is going to be oh, able to Lord. get a controller. Really? <laughs> I just, I, I mean, come on. <laughs> That's <Listen>. like, <laughs> go ahead. Look, I got myself a new Tesla. <laughs> the, I'll get the tires in 2022. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But you have the Tesla. You have, have the Chromecast sitting there you can stare at. What I will say is the whole, the the platform part about like, yes. oh, well, one, it seems like a lot of these games, maybe I don't know. I don't know much about like 2K games and maybe there's a huge online component with those. <laughs> there is a huge online component. It seems component. like a lot of them are single player things. So I don't know, at least in the a very onset, how big of a deal that's going to be. Well, the only reason I say it, I, I make a deal of it is because mm -hmm. um, it was one of the big sellers at the thing. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. you'll be able to do this. You know what I'm saying? Come, you know, when you do this. And then the uh -huh. other reason I make a big deal of it <laughs> is because the game's not launching with it. Like it's yep. not even launching Jeez. with 2K. Um, and you're like, why? Why? But, but I, what I'm getting at is just with that part in particular, yeah. up until right here at the very end of the PlayStation and Xbox generation. Yes. It's always been that way that you just play the people that are on your platform. So that's not oh, that of weird course. to me. Yeah. No, it's not weird to me either. I just hadn't thought about it. Yeah. And then when I think about mm -hmm. how small the the pool is about to be so yeah. Yeah. with destiny with just dance with red dead redemption like red dead online mm -hmm. with mortal Kombat, i would just imagine those four games that are going to be available at launch are mega online mm -hmm. maybe not odyssey odyssey's not but destiny red dead mortal Kombat, just dance those games yes. i would think and just dance is that's floating yeah, right dance, that's like i don't know Kind of you. Yeah, you can get online and do stuff because at some point you just get bored and you want to do it with other people. But like, I don't know how <laughs> small that Red Dead community and Destiny community are about to be. Yeah. Are they like is Destiny 2 about to be like an extremely barren Destiny 2? Community? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I the mean, two is going to stand for the number of people playing it. <laughs> <laughs> Gosh. I mean that that aspect in particular. Well, yes, I, I agree with you. all these things are definitely concerns. I those don't they don't matter much to me. Like I don't find them to be a huge deal. Only in the yes. sense that every new platform, like Xbox, ran into this. Granted, it, they didn't online was brand new, but I mean, like the Wii U had this problem for a while because it was having trouble selling. Like that's just a thing that can be an issue with a new platform. To me, the bigger and even the stream connect thing and the share state thing. I never took those as like, oh, those are going to be there day one. I, and I don't remember. If, I don't remember if it, I, I don't know, but I mean, because I've been around with a lot of console launches where they promise a thing like remote play and PlayStation. Now those were announced at the launch. They didn't come to like years down the road. Like I'm just used to that being oh, a thing. What yes, I will say is a huge problem <laughs> and does not make any sense is the, the whole staggering of the controllers. <laughs> the fact that, that the controller ridiculous. does not work except with a Chromecast. <laughs> Yes. And it doesn't Jeez. even work with current Chromecast. You have to have the brand new version of the Chromecast because a firmware update for the old Chromecast isn't coming until sometime later. Yeah. Like those right there are crazy egregious. Like the other ones for an early adopter are people who have done a lot of early adopting. I've done a lot of early adopting. You know, yes, me too. there's going to be issues and yes. there's going to be stuff you jank and there's going to be all these things. So that's why I like these other things don't particularly bother me. But the hardware either not being there or not working with the other stuff. Now, the one saving grace ish for them is that the people who pre-ordered the founders thing yeah. Are getting the brand new version of the Chromecast and the controller, assuming they show up together. Yep. All that's coming together. So in theory, those people that pre-order the Founders Edition should be covered. But it's like the promise, and it was never stated otherwise until just in these leading couple weeks or months. It was always like, oh, you'll be able to play on anything with any yeah. controller. Bring your own controller or play with this. And they really heavily sold the Stadia controller and you can't use it except in one way. <laughs> I know. And it has to be it has to be wired in a lot of situations. Yeah, it only works wirelessly with yeah, that's what I meant. I'm sorry. I, it will work in the other areas. It will only work wirelessly with that new Chromecast. <laughs> right. It's just So yeah, that's that's Oh, and they're man. saying it's not actually Wi-Fi or something like that, the controller cuz they were, you know, oh, saying I don't know that about that part. The controller is supposed to be able to do all these things. Yeah. 
And at night, it tries to kill you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but my thing was like, because like you're saying, uh, Chris, I totally get mm-hmm. it, right? There's a mm-hmm. bunch of things that people promise that don't happen, right? That's nothing Or take new forever to actually for, come into fruition. For gamers. Yeah. yeah. But I wonder why they can't zoom out and be like, okay, nobody's clamoring for it. So let's launch with everything. Like, let's just wait till February and right. launch with everything. Yeah. Right. Instead well, of launching with mm-hmm. half the stuff yes. with maybe a controller, maybe not a controller. And like, hopefully you don't get the version that's not needing the, the yeah. firmware update. You know what I mean? It's just w- weird because in like, like Chris said, sure, some things don't always work or aren't available on day one but it just seems like with this it's most of the stuff they promised isn't going to be there day one at all yeah yeah i mean it while google has a great reputation for many things yes they also have a very bad reputation when it comes to abandoning products and if Mm -hmm. you know that's what people are going to be thinking about and you know you're a newcomer to a space and you know that you're promising Great experiences and basically a new tech, not a new technology, but a new implementation of it. You've got to be coming with your A game out the out the gate. You've <laughs> got to be doing that. And if you're not yeah. ready to do that, you push it back because you're already at the behest of people in major m- metropolitan cities with good Internet. Yeah, you right. Got so yeah. many things stacked against you that why would you also stack your own things against yourself? That makes no sense. Why would you yes. release a statement saying we are better than every console out there or that will be out there? It's like, oh, <laughs> precisely. You're yeah, like, we will no, predict no, your <laughs> movements in 12 years. Yes. Yeah. You're like, I don't know. My thing came with a controller. <laughs> <laughs> it just, I think it just bugs me because already, obviously, I've poo pooed it a bunch. I'm not on board. But then it just it frustrates As me. As you that should. You have, I know. But like. But maybe I shouldn't. You know what I'm saying? Like, Mm. I should look at the silver lining and be like, okay, Google is trying to push us forward, which I do appreciate. Mm -hmm. I just wish that they did it. I I just wish they were doing it well. It feels like they're just halfway doing it. And it seems like it's just something they could do so they're doing it Mm -hmm. instead of like doing it really, really well. I just don't. It just bugs the crap out of me. Yeah. Like, nobody's asking for it. <laughs> and we're gonna come with the weak sauce. Like it's just not. Yeah, uh, yeah there was this. Me. There was this tweet that I saw today from uh, this guy who goes by at Jeff Grubb. I don't actually know who he is. He's verified, so he's got to be somebody who does something. But he made a tweet. He said Project X Cloud, which X Cloud has been out. It's an alpha or beta right now for people who have signed up and blah blah blah. He said Project X Cloud and Stadia seem like they're in the same place, at least as of today. But Microsoft is clear that xCloud is just a technology, not a product, and Stadia is launching in a week. Mm. So it's like, I, I yeah. kudos to Google wanting to shoot high, but it's like, you got to bring your A game. And they're not yep. bringing their A game. It, it looks more half-baked stuff from Google, and Google has a reputation for half-baking things, and they're like, oh, that didn't work. Okay, well, moving on. And mm-hmm. so everybody's yeah. afraid of that. Uh, yeah and i I do want to give it a try i just at this point especially with all that we know i'm not paying for that i'll wait till the free version comes out i'll hook up my dualshock 4 and i'll give it a go (laughs) Mm -hmm. you want to hear something really weird yeah i know a jeff grubb and this is not him (laughs) 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 like when you put in jeff grubb in google the guy i know pops up on the right and then this guy's twitter pops up on the left and they're totally different. oh that's funny isn't that weird? I was like, oh, I know Jeff Grubb. Nope, not this one. Mm, never mind. Never mind. The guy I know is big in Dungeons and Dragons. You know, I, and I've seen absolutely nothing as far as advertising for this. And, and maybe I'm just not looking in the right spots, but I, I just, I've, I've seen absolutely nothing. So if their own marketing team isn't even backing them and like really going at it, like what? what's yeah. happening like there's got to be some stuff behind the scenes that we don't know well and it's not it's not good either way i don't think and i guess maybe this is just me i, I was never expecting like when death stranding was about to launch like you were even seeing like gabe said the other day like is on espn mm. oh it's on yeah all it's crazy everywhere crap. i never expected that to be the case with stadia because it's so heavily reliant on the internet and it only be in major cities 
but at all the gaming things, like having their little direct versions of direct and all that kind of stuff. Like to me, Stadia was always going to be the gamer, like the nerd kind gamer, like really mm-hmm. tech savvy kind of people. Those were people were going to know, and that's who they were going to be talking to. Yeah, I wasn't expecting it to, at least not at this state, to be like advertised on ESPN. Right, but but something. <sighs> Yeah, like how are they not yeah. at TwitchCon? They should have been at TwitchCon. <laughs> oh, really? Uh, they weren't even at TwitchCon? No. <sighs> and aren't, anyway. aren't they? Is it through Twitch that they're supposed to be doing the whole like, oh, you can pick up where they no, are? No, it's through YouTube. Oh, that's right. Oh, it was through okay. YouTube. Well, then maybe that's why they're not at TwitchCon. That could explain that. Yeah. YouTube. <laughs> yeah, that's true. It's Google. It's Google. Google owns YouTube. Yeah, true. Twitch is Amazon. Yes. Um, yeah, so we'll see. I I really do wish them the best of luck. I really do. I just I just think this is awful. Jeez. <laughs> it's definitely fu- future thinking, forward thinking. I applaud them for that. But that's But like, that doesn't mean you do it right now if you exactly. don't have it. Exactly. And, and, and if you're not going to do it all in, then don't do it at all. Like you don't have all of the components necessary. Why are you bothering then? Like just hold off a little bit if you need to. <sighs> I, I I know everyone's scared. That's the bottom line. Mm-hmm. I ain't scared. I just ain't doing it. Hey, there you yeah, go, exactly. <laughs> Edward. Yes, sir. It's your turn. Well, over on YouTube, We're done. we've got. <laughs> um, I forgot in my update that I had also played the Call of Duty Modern Warfare campaign. Oh and, yeah, did uh, you beat it? Nice. I did. Yeah, and it's my first Call of Duty campaign I've ever played. I had a blast playing it. It was a lot of fun. Nice. You did. You liked it. I d- I really really did. A, a, a another beautiful game. The game just looked amazing. Doesn't it yeah, look so good? Yeah, the cutscenes looked great. Uh, so good. And the voice so acting good. is ridiculous, uh, right? Yes. So well done. And I was also glad to hear in your update. Chris, when you mentioned how many cool throwbacks there were, as someone who's never played a campaign, mm-hmm. I never at what, any point felt like lost. Like, oh, you didn't uh, feel left out. Yeah. So Dude, it was. We got to talk about the end at some point. Nice. I, I can cue cool you in a few things. Nice. Uh, but yeah, those uh, parts one and two are up there. Uh, Death Stranding parts one through three are up there. Some Jackbox Party Pack six, and then a fun video Gabe put together. Gabe and Ed joking through BlizzCon's opening oh, ceremony. You didn't text oh, me when that was up. You were shoot, supposed to. I still gotta watch that. Oh, sorry, I tweeted it. I forgot to text. Sorry, I tweeted oh, it. Out. Doggone it. Yes, and so that's a good is time, right, is, Ed? I was so I was so like nervous about it when we were putting it up. I was like, maybe I maybe this is too self indulgent. <laughs> no, I thought it was fun, man. I thought it was funny. But uh, yeah, that's what's new and enjoyable from the game. Woo. Nice. Yeah. Thanks, Eduardo. You betcha. Well, every week we ask you guys a question. Last week was no different. We asked you, what's the last thing you wasted your money on and why was it Stadia? I'm just kidding. Um, we asked you. Uh, <laughs> Too soon. Yeah. Too soon. We know we have an amazing community and real friendships have started here. But who offline slash in real life do you get to talk gaming with? Shout mm-hmm. them out. Uh, this is Gabe 56 life over on Twitter living in Florida. Now I still talk to a handful of good friends that live in California about gaming, but when it comes to talking gaming with another in person, it goes to my boy at LRG two cold three, AKA Lance G really enjoy talking it up with him about life and games and games and life. That's awesome. Nice. Yeah. Thanks Gabe. We got to stick together, by the way. That's Gabe's. <laughs> Over on Facebook, we got Chad Fackler. I'm working in retail again, so I get to interact oh. with lots of people, some of who game. The other day, I had a lady come in, and as she was paying, I realized she had an Overwatch purse. So nice. I immediately no had to ask who her main was. It was Diva, which then led to a short discussion about the game. So sometimes I get to talk to random strangers about gaming, which is kind of cool. Also, my wife, but don't let her know she was an afterthought. <laughs> oh, <laughs> uh, Andrew, Derek, Hannah Outside of online friends No one at all Unfortunately uh-huh. So I depend on the online friends For my sanity The woman only pretends to listen For 30 seconds before she tunes me out Oh gosh <laughs> The <Golly>. woman <laughs> The woman Yeah woman uh, Nick Huntress Michael Mazur, my cousin and lifetime gaming partner. 
David Shoemaker, my college roommate and Smash brother sparring partner, and Austin Phillips, who I got who I go to church with and is also a fellow member of the MTTG community. Nice. Ooh, what up, Austin? Blah. And then Austin says, I moved away from my friends and family a year ago to be with my wife, and I quickly was adopted by my new best friend and gaming partner in crime, my boy, Nick Huntress. Oh, that's awesome. Nice. Nice. I love that. That's that's so great. Um, over on the Discord, we got Shep Dog. <laughs> this is gonna sound weird. Mm. I talk gaming to anybody who will listen, but mostly it's my hetero life partner, Big Daddy Rick Shock, Joshua Shar Bear, Shar Rage, Sharich, Sharich, and my older brother, Jay Shepard. Nice. There you go. I like that. I like that. Uh, Cat Jack, I have a friend, Gene. My kid. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Gene. The inflection yeah. is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> my kids are the most frequent conversationalists. Lastly, my nephew at family holidays. I'm the gaming funkel, fun uncle, and the only one in my <laughs> family and out of all the sisters and brothers in law who game. All mm. of those poor, deprived children only get to talk gaming a few times a year. And that then is Haley, a fun uncle. <laughs> Haley, uh, my best friend Stone. Nice. Woo. Woo. Indeed. Um, let's go one more. Uh, let's see. Let's go to Chris The Rock. Mm. I used to talk a lot about games with my older with my old friends and work buddies, but more and more I share this passion with my kids. Here's a pic of what my son wanted to do for his birthday. He's as obsessed as I was. We talk about all kinds of games and both our faces light up. My daughter, I got four of them, do also play, but not as much yet. Nice. There you go. Like I like that yet. It. Nah, I like that yet too. Mm -hmm. You know where to find us, Facebook.com slash Married to the Games, Twitter.com slash MTTG cast. Of course, like Ed said, YouTube.com slash Married to the Games. You can come check out Married to the Games.com if you're taking a 365 MTTG challenge. Mm -hmm. All the podcasts are up there, baby. All of them. Um, now on Patreon, if you want to put a dollar in the tip jar, please do Patreon dot com slash mttg it is not too late to join the extra life team remember yeah. extra life goes through the end of december extra dash life dot org slash team slash mttg and uh if you listen to this on friday man lift your boy up and uh come hang out with come hang out with me man tomorrow yeah, man i'm be streaming from saturday to sunday try to hit it on the weekend to where people would be home so far as a team, we have raised raised a little over six thousand dollars. Wow! Our Woo. goal is ten thousand. I think our goal last year was five thousand, so we've already beat that mm -hmm. by a thousand dollars this year. So that's amazing, you guys! Please, please, please donate. Please play. Please join the team. What's and, the uh, Twitch channel uh, address you're going to be streaming on, Gabe? Oh, I'm going to be on twitchtv games. Nice. Woo. A i d e o g a b e s video games it's my name across all the platforms now mm. yes Xbox, R I P sabbath gray R rip sabbath gray steam nah man sabbath gray ain't scared he's fine being dead <laughs> <laughs> sabbath gray ain't scared uh, nah, man. and remember we're giving away a hoodie a t-shirt and a mug to the top three earners on the team and uh so far right now that would be the game tographers Nathan Thomas, followed by Adam Pace. Nice. So if you could beat those guys, 1,600, 1,300, and 1,000, if you could beat those guys, you would in that MTTG swag, baby. Right. What you guys going to do about that? <laughs> Raise this money. <laughs> uh, so that's so much fun. And um, Edward. Rate us on iTunes. Leave a comment and a rating. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that would be the rating part, rate and, on iTunes part. And you'll get a controller by 2088. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Oh, man. Well, let's get into some questions. We're 
starting with email. Mailbag at marriedtothegames.com. Chris, this is for you. Travis P. This girl said she recognized me from the vegetarian club, but I'd never met her before. <laughs> what? That's pretty good, I gotta say. <laughs> That's the second week in a row that we've had something good knocked, knocked out like that. That was good. I but never, I'd never er- met her before. Oh, I like herb of, I got you. Herbivore, oh, vegetarian geez, club. <laughs> well played. Da, 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 I like da, da, it. Da, da, da. Did it. Yeah. Discord, Calm Fury, with Kojima winning three Guinness Book of World Records for the most followed video game director on Twitter and Instagram. <laughs> Who else from the founders slash creators of video games would you put on the Mount Rushmore of video game history? Who else? Mount that Rushmore? assumes I would put him on there to begin with. Ooh. Yeah, Mount Rushmore and a Guinness record are two very different things. <laughs> very different things. <laughs> but that's pretty amazing I mean, for him. he'd be on my Mount Rushmore, but I wouldn't just assume he'd be on everybody's. Yeah. I mean, Miyamoto would be up there for me. Yeah. The creator yeah. of Mario. Yeah. Uh, man, that's tough. Gabe. Yeah, it is tough. Gabe New- Newell? 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 Gabe. How do you say his last name? Newell? Uh, Patillo. <laughs> yes, it's Patillo. Uh, <laughs> um, he is, uh, you know, the guy from Valve, co-founder of Valve. Oh, okay, nice. right. Um, I think also, didn't Gabe have something to do with... Nah, I'm not going to say it. I say know. it. No, what? I'm not Get that it. oops. <laughs> Get, <laughs> Get that oops. Don't fear the oops. <laughs> oh, no, thank you. All right. Uh, well, you need four people, so it sounds yeah. Yeah. Ooh. Man, who's one of who's one of the other daddies of uh, daddies of this thing? Uh, Ooh. you could say. Ah, oh, shoot! What the heck's his name from ID? Oh, now from ID a, Software. Yeah, what the heck's his name? Carmike or or Car or something? Tug on it. I don't know. I forget his name. I'm blanking. This is all you guys. You have fun. I know nobody. <sighs> yeah, that's tough. Now it he's is tough. Facebook. I, I just got Gabe and, and Miyamoto. Ed, can you think of anybody? I'll put Jeff Kaplan up there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you will. <laughs> and you, you know what? I, 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 I wouldn't put be Neil mad Druckmann at, on there. I wouldn't be mad if Reggie ended up up there. Oh, Ooh, Reg. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Oh, yep. We can do that. I like All right, it. cool. I like it. Me too. That works. All right, Nick Huntress, Greek gamer. In light of the end of the Star Wars saga as we know it this December, uh-huh. I think it is about time my kids get introduced to a galaxy far, far away. That being said, where do you start in the saga with kids who have never seen a Star Wars movie? movie Episode one. In order of, how dare you, in order of release <laughs> or in chronological order of the story? Story. Uh, yeah, I think you have to go. For Star Wars, you do story. You got to remember. Really? Yeah, you yeah. got to remember four is not exciting at all. I what? mean, it was exciting when you were seven years old. Uh, yeah, yeah, but you haven't seen I, I anything it, like but that. I, I get what you're saying, but I'm I like saying it. to children today, like, uh, like uh, Ed, did you like Five Will Goes West? No, I was bored with it. Oh, I okay. Hated did you that like movie. the Did you like the first one? No, American he Tale. Raised? American Tale. American Tale. The first one that was oh. like super popular. No, it was no. like three hours long. It was too boring it? for me. It was, but it was like really popular. And somewhere yeah. out there, that junk yeah. moves so. You're right, Ed. That junk moves so slow. And most cartoons back then did. You got to think like Cinderella, um, Lady and the Tramp. Like all those Disney movies move so slow, and mm. kids are not used to that crap nowadays. Mm. And so I, I, I feel I like you got to come with the flash, the, the shock and awe and start with episode one with like the pod fighters racing and all that stuff. God, yeah, no. just doesn't Ugh. have much of that. But, I, I don't, that I being, don't. If you okay. do show them chronological, then do you show them the new updated versions of the old ones? Because they're going to be expecting the cool effects. I don't know. I don't. I'm trust me. I'm struggling with this right now. I thought about you guys today because I was like, all right, episode nine's coming out. I would. I would be doing myself a service if I went back and watched all the Star Wars mm-hmm. just to like have a, you know, refresh up. Mm-hmm. But I'm telling you, man, I tried to show Jenny four a couple years ago and I think we both fell asleep. It's just, <laughs> it's slow moving. 
You are yeah. hurting my heart. No, right I now. feel I you. I, I feel you. I, I respect it, and I think it's amazing. I'm just saying. No, it's no, not, I, I'm with you. It's not exciting. So here's what I did with Piper. I, I started. Feel that. I oh. started with four, and we went four, five. We went four, five, and six. Uh huh. I haven't. I'd never touched one, two, or three. Went right into seven. <laughs> really? So one, two, and three are dead to me. Yeah. And and I would say do four, five, six, and go and and just keep going from there. And then if they really want to get into some cheese fest, then do one, two, and three to get some backstory. But she loved um, she loved four, five, and six, and she loves Force Awakens. I mean, seven. We well, I, and I think a lot of it was just because of BB-8. Like yep. that was that was such a kicker for her. But I mean, I don't know. And I'm just I, this. These were my jams growing up. I mean, when I was yep. young, Empire Strikes Back. I saw that I had I had my parents take me or went to the movies to see Empire Strikes Back at least, I remember, about eight times in the movie theaters wow. yeah. because I loved it so much. And did you think Jenny would like episode four? Because I, I wouldn't guess no. that she would. No, but we were just, I just wanted to do it from a history standpoint because I wanted her to like, I wanted her to like it, but it's what you're saying. Like, you would think she wouldn't. And there's a reason right. you would think she wouldn't. But she liked seven. <clears throat> did and she, she liked Rogue One. You know what I'm saying? I like, okay. love Rogue those, One. Those are, oh. those are different, though. That's yeah. my point. <laughs> yeah, they, they are. She's, she's an adult. And like, I don't know. Did he mention the age of the kid that he's trying to introduce these to? No, he didn't. But okay, don't so you think seven is four updated? Yes, exactly. Which is mm -hmm. fine. That's yes. your next generation of Star Wars fans. Seven. That's my JJ point. J.J. Abrams nailed it, and it was perfect. However, if you really want to be a purist, which you don't have to, but I would go with, with four first. You're really going to go with one first with Jar Jar Binks and like Listen, all this other garbage? Yes, it hurts. I think yes, that absolutely would, you are. It Ugh. hurts me. I, I would tell, Disgusting. I always tell people to go machete order and one's not even in machete order. You know what Ugh. I'm saying? They leave one out. No, one, one is of the original, or not the original, but the, the first three. One's the best one, one's you think? One's probably the best one. Yeah. Of the three. Two and three You mean of the second three? So rushed. Yeah, episode one of, of one, two, and three. Yep. The order would probably go one, three, and then two would be last. Like two is really yeah. slow, really yeah. bad. There's a yeah. lot going on in two that they have to explain. It's not that great. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. one is probably the best of the of the re the sequel trilogy or prequel trilogy. Excuse me. But the reason I say like there are times where I would say like oh yeah you read them in the intended order of when they release and yada yada yada. But this story as a whole, when you look at it as a you step back and look at it all, you're, you're not. You're not gay. I don't feel like you're gaining anything by watching it on the order that it was released. I say you start, especially if we're talking about kids. I'm talking about yeah, in my head. I I'm thinking that. kids are like four to seven, maybe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or you know, you start yeah, them on and you start 12. with one. They they're not going to have any context on, on Jar Jar Binks or whatever. They're going to think this little where his tongue is stuck on things is yeah. funny. They're going to think that's funny, and then you move on through, and then they see how Anakin turns into who he is, and all these other different things like that. I, I think that would be perfectly fine. All right, mm. Yeah. Yeah, I see. I see your point on that from just a kid's perspective. Like, it's a, definitely. I feel like one, two, and three are definitely more, not lighthearted, but I, I can see how that would. Yeah, that's a good point. The but, one area where I, I do buy into your theory, uh, Tim, about like do it the original way that they release is if you start at one and go through. Yeah, it doesn't have the. Darth You're, Vader is his dad moment because you know that going in. Right. Right. So right. you do maybe lose that. Yeah. Yeah. That. And that's point. why yeah. I like Machete Order because it kind of goes four or five. And so like the characters are established mm -hmm. back to two and three, then six. So you have kind of the culmination, you know, the oh, climax wow. okay. of the story. Um, that's so how I told Toby and his kids. Where to do you it. put one then? The, one's not in machete order. Ah, I love it. Okay, <laughs> what do you cool. keep saying machete? Yeah, you never yeah, heard I that. I don't, know what that is. I don't know what you're talking about. You're oh. hacking it up. You hack it up. Yeah, it's a hack up, up different way of watching Star Wars because it kind of like two, it, you know you have not four the and movie five. machete. Yeah, yeah or the character. Like I know, right? So you watch four <laughs> and five, which like really grounds your characters because there's not really a reason. If you think about Star Wars, if you take one, two, and three by themselves, there's literally no reason for you to like these characters. Right. If you have no context. There's no, con yeah, there's no context. Um, But if you watch four and five and you kind of have this, like, you kind of fall in love with them there, then you mm -hmm. go back and watch two and three, which really dive into the turn of, you know, with 
Anakin and and everything like that. And you know, he's falling in love with Natalie and Portman. Then go to six, and then you go to, yeah two and yeah, three. I kind of dig that. Yeah, six. that's not a bad idea. Yeah. Anyway. Hmm. Wow. Yeah. Or you could go four, five, six, seven, eight. I mean, really. <laughs> I agree. You know, and skip one, two, three all together. I agree. I, I mean, you gain some things, but as a kid, I don't know if you gain anything by watching one, two, and three. That's so much backstory. Honestly, and but one, two, and three and are going to appeal to kids more than even four, five, and six. It, and say it could it be. Honestly, I feel like they would. Would you say? Yeah. One, two, three. I think one, two, and three would appeal to kids more than four, five, and six would. Yes. Well, I then, think they would too. I just don't think they're as good at movies. Right. But. Four, five, and six are way older, so it, you've got that mm -hmm. old movie yeah. style feel to it versus one, two, and three, yeah. which are a little more modernized. So I get, Chris, I totally get your point. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I'm kind of yeah. torn. But, but you know how like they take the midichlorians and like that's only oh. in one. Ugh. You know what I'm saying? So you get rid of the confusion of that. Yes. And like Darth Darth Sidious and Training Count Dooku and all this stuff. Plus, yeah. if you skip one, you're skipping one of the best villains, at least from a cool factor standpoint. Is that that small? Yeah, Which Darth, mm -hmm. who, who's yeah, who's he's and always the duel, out there in the Halloween. Duel of the Fates soundtrack, and then the fight inside the area, and then yeah, yeah. Qui Gon getting killed. And mm -hmm. spoiler alert, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. I, I mean, you could go. It's man, tough, all, man. Oh yeah, there's all yeah. kinds of ways. Nick, I'm sure we're not helping you out at all. Yeah. I say, exactly. yeah. I say, go with go with whatever the force leads you. Yeah, and just yeah, trust your feelings and yeah. what your it. heart tells you. All right, MLX, let's play a little Would You Rather, shall we? Mm -hmm. Would you rather live in a world where gaming is, added, is at where it is now, but peripherals, VR, controllers, phones, and apps, were more advanced? I'm talking like 30 to 40 years. Hmm. So gaming is as it is now, but with higher quality peripherals, or live in a world where gaming was completely streaming to the point where you could play AAA titles from your phone from anywhere, but we're still on the equivalent of an iPhone 4S. <laughs> oh, God. The first one. Yeah, the first yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, I'd go with, with higher quality peripherals and keep gaming where it yeah. is right now. And I'm not going to be streaming, period, I don't think. So I yeah. definitely yeah. don't want number two. Yeah, I like it. Chris, where are you yeah, at? Yeah, same. I'm number the first one. First the one? peripheral okay. one. Yeah. Cool. It's a Neebs. When you guys are recording MTT, oh, that was it for the. <laughs> that was it for that. Yeah, it was one. Yeah, it was one or the other. Oh, I thought there was gonna be more than one. Sorry, I, yeah. I went to rush through it. Oh, totally. sorry, sorry. It's okay. Uh, it's a Neebs. When you guys are recording MTTG, what segment is usually your favorite yet that you're the most excited to talk about every week? No, whatever the default is, answers or saying the whole thing is my favorite. Questions. Yeah, questions. Yeah, I, I yeah, love questions. questions. Yeah. Me too. It's we've the only. Had... It's the only surprise. Yeah, yep. exactly. You know, I know what I did had... this week, <laughs> and I talked we've to these guys enough to know that I kind of know what they got going on. We've had a ton of laughs on questions too. Yes, yes. Yeah. I mean yes. a ton. That's where I think a lot of our funny moments come in. And yes. you're right because it's a surprise. So, mm -hmm. by the way, did you guys see that Mark Wahlberg signed on to play Sully in the Uncharted movie? I did no. not. No. Yeah, Mark Wahlberg. I think you're faking. Sully? No, I'm not faking. As Sully? Well, you have, to, April. you have to remember, uh, you know, it's Tom Holland yeah, playing it's young Nathan, Nathan Drake, Drake. So it's like when he's really uh, young. So yeah, Sully yeah. will be young, not old Sully. You can say hi to your mother for me. <laughs> Gosh. Uh, so, yeah, questions. Good. Uh, Cat Jack, what microphones do you each use to record the podcast? Let's get into some technical. Uh, the Blue Spark. Ed. Blue steel. I use a Shure SM58. Ooh, the SM58, the oldie but a goodie. Faithful, old faithful. I've got a Shure MV51. Yep. Chris? I use an Electro Voice RE320. There you go. Nice. And welcome to Nerd Talk. All right, here we go. Ooh. Old man Guido, in the spirit of taking my kids to a wrestling event, Oh wow! If you were a professional wrestler, yeah. wrestler what would be the name of your finishing move? Stone Cold had the stunner. The Rock had the rock bottom. Oh, did he? I never knew what the kind Rock of. was called. Uh, uh, what would be the name of your finisher? Is that the same thing as finishing move or yep. finisher is different? Yep. I think it's the same thing. Okay. Um, <laughs> Mine would be whatever the default is. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> Mine would be the, uh, the old curse splat. Oh, curse splat. <laughs> then he nice. hit it with that old curse splat. It was crazy. Oh. 
That's going to be messy. <laughs> mm-hmm. Chris, you got one? The ginger snap. Ooh. Yeah. I like the it. Ginger snap. A little the play on words there. Snap. Well done. Ooh, I like that's that. a good one. Yeah. That's really good. It's really good. Ed, it's up to you. Um the the grinder. Oh. <laughs> oh, nice. Lord. That works on many levels. That yes, it does. That's freaking gross. I like that. <laughs> yeah, I like it. That's, that means we'd have to be tag team partners. Be like, Ed hit him with the grinder, and then he got cursplatted. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good. All oh, right, good God, one. That's so gross. Enjoy the wrestling event, man. Sounds good. Yeah. Sounds awesome. Yeah, I've never All been right. to one. Final question. Either. Yeah. Final question, Twitter. Mr. Pastor Ham at M. TTG Brazil team. Hey guys. Hi. Is is eggnog a Christmas drink or winter beverage? Asking for a friend who isn't sure what he believes anymore. The holidays can be very existential. <laughs> it's a medical condition and you shouldn't drink it. <laughs> yeah, it's neither. It's called disgusting. Yes. How dare you? Yeah. Number one, eggnog is delicious. It is delicious. What? Dude. We'll get that out of the way. So, so Gabe, have you... It's a winter I, beverage. It is? Even like though... After, you really should stop drinking it after Christmas. Yes, you should. Even yes, though winter ha- would have started three days before Christmas. Right. Mm-hmm. So I think it's a fall slash winter. Because like we're <laughs> buying eggnog already, and it's not even Thanksgiving. Yeah. And we yeah. always have eggnog with Thanksgiving. And yeah, so, me too. Uh, but I'm, I'm more of an eggnog in my coffee kind of guy these days. Ooh. Um, oh, dude. It's yes. so good. You know, it is, it's, dude. Have you ever tried it? Yeah, Ed, have you tried it? I get enough eggnog in the Kleenexes I've coughed up into the last month. This oh my gosh, how dare you? The no grinder. way, man. No way. Yeah, eggnog's delicious. It is. It's awesome. No. I understand that <sighs> the uh consistency can weird people out. Yes. So it's I'm, like a smoothie. It's like, it's it's, like me with it's, shrimp. It's, what kind of, what kind of it's a, it's like a yogurt smoothies smoothie. are you drinking? It's like a yogurt smoothie. That's what it's like. Trust me, we have a ton of yogurt smoothies smoothies in our house. <laughs> um, but like I'm the same with shrimp. Like, number one, I like the way shrimp tastes, but the consistency of shrimp and just how like slick it is. Mm. Ugh, shrimp just, is good. Man. See? It's delicious. Exactly. See how that works? Yep. We both think things. Mm. We do. <laughs> Look at our brains. <laughs> Look at our brains thinking things. <laughs> Look at our brains thinking things. That mm. is it for all the questions this week. Thank you guys so much. We appreciate it. Eggnog rules. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the question for you guys of the week is, what unpopular opinion do you hold about gaming? What unpopular opinion do you hold unpopular. about gaming? Goes good with eggnog. <laughs> <laughs> So you're saying oh like what gosh. unpopular opinion do we kind of agree with? Yeah, what do you saying? hold? Yeah, what what yeah. unpopular opinion do you hold about gaming? Hmm. Uh, for instance, uh, I think the Bioshock games are no good. One and two. Oh, mm. Unpopular. Hurt you're hurting me. But it's true. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. I think that. Ed, do you have an unpopular opinion about gaming? <sighs> Uh, here's I mean, another one okay <laughs> okay <laughs> i never oh this is a bad one guys oh i love it a bad right. one not to you guys but to other people yeah, didn't really uh care to play mario 64 fair enough if i was being completely honest that's that's, that's not gonna, your big that's okay. not good to do trust me that's not gonna hurt y'all's feelings <laughs> that's yeah. gonna hurt somebody's feelings bad <laughs> um <laughs> Some, uh, 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 oh wow, so, are you scared um, to say it? Nintendo fanboys can't admit when Nintendo makes a mistake. Ooh, that's a popular opinion in my house, but I understand, <laughs> <laughs> but I understand that not being popular. That's very true. That's also truth. Chris, you have an unpopular opinion. Puzzles don't belong in action games. <laughs> <laughs> they just don't. You want to make a puzzle game, make your puzzle game. Don't make puzzles You want to make action. an action game, you don't like, all right, let's slow down this action and figure out a puzzle. No. Get that junk out of your game. That's amazing. Uh, that is amazing. Tim? Uh, 
I'm kind of with Ed on this one. Double Dragons a fighting game? Double Dragons a fighting game. <laughs> and, Ed is, and Ed is in Florida. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's right. No, uh, I, yeah, I'm kind of with Ed on the whole... No, 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 no. You're not getting out of this one by taking someone else's answer. You gotta come up with your own. <laughs> but I don't, like... I have my own opinions about stuff. Like, I don't like that's Nintendo, fine. but that's not an unpopular necessarily. Oh, you don't like I'll, Nintendo. That's different than Nintendo fanboys can't admit when they're wrong. Well, it's true, that's but true. It, that's, it's also, I mean, a lo- is that really a video game unpopular thing? I think it's, so, because that's I more, think that It's we more can... opinion-based, isn't it? That's why I wasn't going to say it. But for me, I just don't like Nintendo. I'm not a huge fan of Nintendo. Never have been. Ooh. Never and have I know been? Those are fighting words been. for some people. And sure. I own a Wii U. <laughs> yeah, but that was a bad one. The Wii U was, that was terrible. A bad one. I, look, that's Mar- like being like, like, and I own a Virtual Boy. For me, the only thing that I love about Nintendo is Mario Kart. That's the only thing that I love. Mario Kart's an amazing game. Mario Kart's great, but that's it. Like, I'm not. That game's excited. almost perfect. I'm not excited about Nintendo. I feel you. Never have been. I feel you. We're not the there only ones are. that have these thoughts, you guys. Tell us what your unpopular opinion in gaming is. You ain't got to be scared. There's no judgment here. We're going to read them. We're going to disagree with most of you. And (laughs) just like y'all disagreed with us. Exactly. Just like you guys were like, what? Mario 64 was amazing. It was groundbreaking. I love puzzles. Just go into it knowing that some of you are going to get banned and that's okay. (laughs) Yep. (laughs) Yeah. It's all yep. part of the process here. That's right. It's only a one week ban. It's all part of the Unless experience. It's particularly honey. egregious. <laughs> yeah. Jeff Swan, don't come with any of that Last of Us talk. Yeah. I don't want to hear it. Oh, he's coming hard with the Last of Us talk now. Don't he come is with, coming hard with it. Don't come with that Dragon's Lair 2 is better. <laughs> Dragon's Lair 2 is better than Dragon's Lair 1. Agreed, Edward. It Agreed. Is, what do you guys talk? You guys haven't played Dragon's Lair 2. No yeah, comment. Yeah. Gabe is banned. <laughs> it's, it's so much better than one. It's oh my god! <laughs> it's comes from somebody who's, I've played both. I've played a lot of hours on both. I've played Bioshock both. is a treasure, Gabriel. Bioshock is a treasure. I get it. I do not like those first two games. Oh. Those games are, are junk. To That's me. funny. Um, <laughs> let us know your. Up- <laughs> There's no way you really believe that, Gabe. You just say that because you know it riles me up <laughs> about dragon about Dragon's Lair. Yes. I totally believe that. Oh, Don Blue. What's so good about the first one? Everything. What do you mean? The second one's so much better. It's the same thing, but better. No, it's not. It's the no, same it's thing, not. but it's, on drugs and worse. It's Yeah. It's like the oh. writing was terrible on two. At least one you had like, you had character development. There was like. Like what? I don't know. No, I don't man. Know. Dirk just like ran in the same Tim, rooms except Dirk mirrors. Like, Tim, there literally, no you'd run in the same room. <laughs> you'd run in the same room twice, except mirrored oh. on, Dra- on Dragon's Lair 1. That, it was just, uh, but it was just Save the Princess, a great yeah. classic setup Sim- for a video game. That's simple, the story for two. Simple story. No. no, 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 two, no. Was, t- two got in its own way. Yes. I what agree. do you mean? What was so wrong about the story in two? Everything. It was I, I'm too telling ridiculous. you, you can't name it. I've, the controls I've, were uh, too, way too impossibly hard. You think? Yes. I beat it in the arcade. It wasn't that hard. I oh, wasn't man. rich. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't rich. <laughs> I know that I know for some reason. I think it's just because Dragon's Lair 1 came first, honestly. I think if they were switched and 2 came out, people would feel the same way. They'd be nope. like, oh, 2 was terrible. One was mm. good, but one was no. really two. Mm, I don't that's know, how man. people would feel. One is not that good. It's, that's nostalgia talking. I'm telling you. <sighs> I don't know. <laughs> but Some I do people know have a lot thoughts. Of, I, I, the, I know a lot of people that agree with you. <laughs> so I'm not saying that that's like an outlandish thought. Pretty, sh- two pretty sure 99% that, of the two people is, will agree I'm with that. that but whatever. <laughs> All good. Oh, I love it. I will play two right now. I freaking love that game. <laughs> you do. I will say that maybe Space Ace is better than both of them. Ooh, there you go, my now friend. Now you're talking. Now we're friends again. <laughs> <laughs> you cannot win. Chris, have you played any of those? I played at least some of each of them in the arcades. I remember when I was younger, but I've never played either of them all the way through. I couldn't tell you what's going on in the story or anything, but I remember playing them. I can't remember Kimmy! playing one in the in the arcade. I don't, I don't mm. remember that. I played two in the arcade, not one. I spent mm. a lot of money on those games mm-hmm. in the arcade. A lot of money. Yeah. 
because two was so good. No, nope, just on Space Ace and Dragon's Lair 1. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I loved that freaking game, man. Uh, uh, I mean, they're both, they both have their thing. I just think two got right I, where one lacked a little bit. Because I'm oh playing my. one, I'm I like, gotta watch it again. We got this room? We got to do a comparison. I got to watch the whole thing again. Yeah, do it. All right. You're going to be sad because your mm. mind is going to change up. Mm. You'll be like, oh, shoot, Gabe was right. Mm. All right. <laughs> There it is. We'll uh, talk to you guys next week. <laughs> Three, 374 of the books. Come hang out with me on stream. Be playing Dragon's Lair yeah, 2 man. over and over again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> Please play Dragon's Lair 1 and 2. That's I actually a really good idea. I don't think I'd be able to make it through one, honestly. So, so we can watch you change your mind in real time. <laughs> <laughs> you just see it in my eyes. Like, oh, crap. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm Gabe Patillo. That's Tim Router. That is Ed Placencia. That is Chris McCracken. And we are married to the games. And we are up out this thing. Yeah!